T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 20 seconds. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man, only, only trap talk exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. Rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, God love it, love it, and not them hop from the hop to the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up. Get the club to pop when I come up with it. Everybody, we do it. Everybody, we do it. You are now tapped into the coolest <laughs> reptile podcast in the world. I'm your boy, MJ. What is good, everybody? How's everyone doing out there? Happy Sunday. Top of the uh, evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're at. You're tapping in to the coolest reptile podcast in the world. And we have an amazing episode. Shout out to all my early birds in the building. Um, <clears throat> I'm very excited, man. Very excited. A lot of reasons why I'm excited. Uh, but you guys know how we get started in a podcast like this for the freshest and bestest. And guess what? I got ready. I got that new logo ready. That's that cold blood cafe for the freshest and bestest rodents delivered to your doorstep. Day one pinks to mammoth rats. Your reptile children's will thank you. If you feed them cold blood cafe, $30 flat rate shipping. One of the sickest logos currently in the game. I love it. Uh, shout out to Steven. Shout out to Desiree. Cold blood cafe, the jam. That's it. Shout out to John and Alex who are a sim container. If you got eggs, put them inside of a sim box. Very looking forward to this year's season. I wonder how soon am I going to run out of uh, sim containers? Shit, I have nine and I ran out last year. Um, everything came out once last year. But either way, I got to be ready. Uh, um, John, you know I need more sim containers. If you plan on having a great year this year, if you plan on having any eggs this year, get yourself a sim container if you're not using one already. They're the truth. If it's a sim, it's a win. Shout out to my boy Alex and John over at Sim Container. Shout out to Steven and Ashley grinding hard over at Focus Cube Habitats, changing the game, flexing Texas all day, every day. Give them a follow on Instagram. If you got reptiles that you want inside of anything built PVC, this is your this is where you got to go. I mean, I think PVC is, depending where you live, right? But for where I live, I think PVC is amazing. And the fact that Focus Cube has, you know, their own style and they're all, they're custom, you know, they'll build you whatever you want in, in a sense, you know, um, they're, 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 that's where it's at. Focus Cube Habitats. Thank you so much for the uh, support, ongoing support. And uh, yeah, we'll love to them. Appreciate it. Shout out to Jesse and the entire Freedom Breeder crew. What an amazing time last week. And at uh, Tinley, I had a great time with, uh, you know, Jesse and his entire crew. And, uh, you know, I got to hang out with other people and whatnot, but, uh, yeah, man, Freedom Breeder, the number one stainless steel rat company in the game for you know, since the 90s. Fuck, that's what I'm talking about. 90s was a good time. Uh, shout out to Jesse. Shout out to the entire Freedom Breeder crew. You got a Freedom Breeder rack. You already know what level you're on. Much love. Uh, much love to my one and my, my one big dog in the fucking game, and that's Miguel Garcia. Always evolving pythons. 
always murking, always freaking inspiring. This guy has amazing ball python projects cracking off this year. Uh, so either way, if you've been in ball pythons, if you are uh, starting to get into ball pythons, if you don't follow Miguel Garcia, you are hurting yourself. I'm telling you right now, even if you don't like the guy for whatever reason, pff, I'm telling you, this guy has just, he just spits game out for people. Um, so Miguel, thank you so much. Appreciate all your hard work. Appreciate you doing all the fucking grinding down in Mexico. That's pretty sick. Glad you're back. Uh, but shout out to the whole AEP family. First and foremost, I appreciate all your guys' support. And I cannot wait to get Miguel back on a show. You know how bad I'm waiting for that. Um, and I just got to put a little bit more pressure on him. He's this busy guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to my boy, Alan. I haven't even had this guy on the show yet, and I cannot wait. Trust me, it is on the docket. But uh, if you're into basins, you're into boreal snakes, uh, but mainly if you're into basins, right? If you're looking to uh, learn more about the Amazon tree boa, uh, emerald Amazon tree boa, um, this is the, the Amazon – <laughs> based in amazon tree boa what the fuck am i saying i'm so sorry alan uh but anyways this is your guy to want to go follow uh he has an amazing patreon page where you could actually get on a list of some of his uh stock that he's going to be producing this year I'm telling you right now man alan is one of the few doing big things with these basins so uh shout out to my boy alan also working with ball pythons as well uh, and he's starting to show a little bit more of that so make sure you go give him a follow on instagram amazing basins and then shout out to my boy, Blake Stewart, who is behind the logo change of Cold Blooded Cafe, as you see here, and is also behind the logo change of Justin Kabelka and does Garrett Hartles. I mean, that's just to name a couple right off the bat. This guy is going to be doing mad work for people in this hobby who's doing this for life, like myself. I'm doing this shit for life. And yeah, Blake Stewart is going to help me out 110%. If you out there are in a position where you want to market yourself on a next level professional basis, then you're going to want to go reach out to Blake Stewart, SD Identity on Instagram. Go to his website. Hit him up. Don't waste his time. This guy is the real deal. Holy field. I am not fucking around. Shout out to my boy, Blake Stewart. Appreciate everything. Had a good time with him also at Tinley. And uh, speaking of Tinley, speaking of shows, shout out to the guys who throw the two best shows in the United States. One of them being the Reptile Super Show. Shout out to my boy, Rami. Sickest show on the West Coast by far. Cannot wait to hit up Pomona, Anaheim, Las Vegas. It's going to be cracking. I hope you guys can make it to a Reptile Super Show because I'm telling you right now, it changes everything when it comes to meeting people in person. None of this goddamn social media fucking reality bullshit. It's not reality, man. Meet up in person. That's reality. And then, uh, yeah, speaking about the show reality that I'm super hyped up about and talking about now is the uh, NARBC. Bob, Ashley, and Brian Potter. What an amazing job. Uh, Tinley was a success, I feel like, personally. Um, and after speaking to a lot of other people, Tinley was a success. Uh, so shout out to those two for throwing such an amazing show. And uh, yeah, like I said, man, I will preach this to the day I am done. Go to a reptile show. Go link up with people. If you've had a homie that you've been friends with on social media for a while, go link up with them. I'm telling you right now, if you really want to be about this, especially if you feel stuck, right? Especially if you've been in this for a couple of years and you're like, damn, why aren't I, you know, like I ain't trying to buy followers, you know, I'm not that fake, you know, but I just, why aren't I growing? Like, what the fuck? You got to put yourself out there. That's it. That's all I got to say. Plain and simple. Uh, yeah. U.S. Arc. Shout out to Phil Goss. Raised over 112K at the Tinley Show. And uh, yeah, man, if, thank you so much. If you out there, hey, honestly, I'm not even going to bash anyone who does not support U.S. Arc. That's fine, man. You know what? Live your life. I just want to sit here and say thank you to everyone who does support U.S. Arc. I want to say one love to everyone who is on the same team that I'm on when it comes to fighting for your animal rights. Because you, this is just something I would never want to take for granted. I know one day, the room I'm in, these animals will no longer be in my life at some point. And that's just the reality. You know, It could be tomorrow. Fuck, I hope not. I'm really loving life right now. But all I got to say is, if you really want to give yourself a peace of mind on what you can do to protect your animals, you're going to want to go to U.S. Art. Go down to the link below. Read up about it. If you're still sketch, just read about it. Ask your other – Ask. I'm telling you right now, legit – Okay, as far as new people in the game, nine out of ten people fuck with U.S. Arc. As far as overall, like the you know the fucking goddamn Jesus Bob Smith old fuckers who just don't want to evolve and stuff, yeah, I would say maybe seven out of ten support U.S. Arc. So don't be on that. Be on the positive side. Be on like you know come fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I appreciate everyone out there who supports U.S. Arc. I appreciate if you talk about U.S. Arc because it's we just gotta keep talking about it. It's the real deal. Uh, and if you want to see what I'm working with, if you want to, uh, you know, kind of see what uh, projects I have going on, what my passions are and what I like to sell, uh, go to MJ Exotics Cartel on Instagram with an A, not an E. 
And then you can also follow the uh, podcast's Instagram page on Instagram, Trap Talk with MJ Podcast. Shout out to my Twitch viewers, man. Twitch viewers going up every podcast. Respect to that. Um, and then for whatever reason, if you like to support this channel more than a subscription, more than a like or a comment, I support. I love any kind of support. But if you want to show me more love than that, uh, you can send me any donation to Exotics Cartel with an A, not an E. Um, and then also any super chat. If you have a question for our, our homegirl, Jessica, here, and you're like, MJ, you got to read out this question, man. Well, whatever super chat you put into this episode gets sent over to U.S. Art. So it's a double whammy. You get your answer and that money gets sent to U.S. Art. And I appreciate any donations. Don't be shy. Let's show Jessica some love. And then last but not least, shout out to my Patreon members. See this right here? This is a trap official Patreon. Like this is for only for the guests, only for my Patreon members, okay? Because trapping is a sport. Trapping is not for everyone. Not everyone even likes sports. But this is the kind of sport that I fuck with. So anyways, I got to say thank you to all my Patreon members out there. If you out there want to become a part of the trap family, if you want to see what this is all about, if you want to hop on the Discord and kind of learn from what, what we all got going, over 100 people who are just as passionate as I am about keeping – a whole wide range of herps. I'm dead ass serious. Ball pythons, chondros, emeralds, monitors, you name it, geckos. We got it all. And we got a bunch of heavy up and coming breeders. We got OG breeders. We got so many different types of people a part of this Patreon page. So again, if you want more out of this and maybe traveling is really hard for you, then if you want like a little bit of a boost and of, of uh, build your community, then go down to the trap Patreon and come fuck with us. Come join our family. What is good? I love my Patreon family member. Trap Fest 2022 is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. By the way, once you become uh, – once you join the Patreon family, you you get special privileges and go to special events that I might throw, like Trap Fest 2022 going down in July. Yes, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the weekend of uh, Anaheim Super Show. So it's all going to make sense, right? Uh, but, guys, honestly, Patreon family member, I love you guys so much. Appreciate all your support. You guys don't need to do what you do for me, and you guys honestly do. And I'm going to keep fucking riding this shit until the wheels pop off. You feel me? All right, what is good? Okay, hold on. One last plug because I'm working hard. You know, this is Barcheck's fault, okay? Because, you know, listen, I'm trying to do what is – I'm trying to do as much as I can, uh, you know, because, you know, I go a lot of places and, you know, I see a lot of people's facilities. So I'm trying to do these vlogs. I'm trying to do these trap clips, right? But I've been putting them all out on one channel, which has been kind of shooting me in the foot. So now I separated everything, but I'm still coming out with everything. So what I need help – from all my fucking viewers out there, if you're even if you're a semi trapper and you're like this with me, still like you will still catch amazing content on these other channels. So together, this is what we're gonna do. Check it yeah. out because I've had to teach some people literally how to subscribe on uh, at the show. Like literally, I took their phone and how to teach them. It's all good. I'll teach you guys too. So obviously, go, go you know subscribe to the Trap Talk with MJ podcast. This is the channel that you're on now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, okay, because that's very important. Hit that notification bell, and then also make sure that you go support my new channel that is called the Snake Trap Sessions Vlogs. Now, the Snake Trap Session Vlogs is where I'm going to be releasing all my weekly vlogs. Cool thing about me going to this channel, I'm going to be coming out with two vlogs a week now. I'm going to be pumping out fucking heat. So go to the search bar right above right there, right there where he's the highlighted. Type in the Snake Trap Sessions Vlogs. Once that comes up, you're going to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to unsubscribe real quick just so you guys can see it. See that red button right there? Hit that red button. Boom. And then hit that notification bell. That's notification bell. Fuck, dude. I, you would think people would know this. I'm just kidding. Shout out to all my OGs out there. Who would, I had to teach Tim Bailey, Garrick DeMeyer. You know, I'm, I'll teach them with how to do I don't give a fuck. But anyways, okay. Steak Trap Sessions vlog, YouTube channel. Make sure you go subscribe to it. And then I have one more because, guys, you don't understand that I've had so many. Well, a lot of you do understand. But if you're just now tapping into this podcast, I've been doing this for going well over two years. I've had so many amazing guests on. And there's probably things you guys missed. So the cool thing about this next channel that I'm sharing, and I feel like it's just as important for you to check out, Trap Talk Clips. Okay? Go right here, search bar. Type in Trap Talk Clips. And then go subscribe to the channel. And I'm coming out with two weekly clips okay so tuesdays and thursdays i'll be dropping clips from past guests super random but i'm telling you right now i'm putting a lot of work as far as what stuff to bring back that i thought was fucking hitters and stuff that you guys really could really take advantage of so do your boy a favor if you, especially if you really fuck with me and you're like how can i help mj go subscribe to these two channels i would really appreciate it all right what is good with my early birds Who's in the building for my homegirl, Jessica? Because this is going to be a fire-ass episode. All right, here we go. Deviant Glass in the building.
member all day, every day. The homegirl Chantel, Pacific Northwest gangster in the building. What is good, Pacific Rim Serpents? Thank you for being here. Trap Talk Patreon family member all day. The homie Julio Fulio. What is good, Julio? Trap Talk family member all day. Mason Johnson. Thank you. Smash that like button. Please smash that like button. 63 people in the building. Got to at least have 60 likes at this point. Uh, Trap Talk family member all day. The homie Jacob. What is cracking, Jacob? What is popping? This kid's a pimp right here. Go give him a follow on Instagram. What's your page? What's your name on Instagram? I forget, bro. But anyways, Trap Talk family member all day. Homie Luke Federal. What is up? I hope I said that right. What's up, Matthew? Evolution Exotics in the building. Freshly moved to Florida. How are uh, the new trap of, you know, oh, actually, you got that one. My bad. No, couple productions you got from uh, not only, you know, you got one from me, which is that sick ass clown girl, and then uh, Soccer Cheese. I hope those two snakes are doing good. I hope things are going good, man. Thanks for tapping in. Trap Talk, La Familia member all day, every day. Um, let's see, the homie Big Mike in the building, P uh, Ball Python Savage turned Condro Savage. That is sick. That's the kind of shit I like to see. Got the homegirl, and he's pet. Uh, he's Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. Hannah Banana, what is good, homegirl? Trap, Trap Talk family member, Tech Flex in Texas all day, every day. Wise guys, what is good? The homie Triple G, what is cracking? Triple G, this will has another heavy package coming out his way this week. God, this could do. Go give this guy a follow right now. He just hit 300 followers on Instagram, and easily this fool needs to be at 1K. And let's help him right now. I'm telling you right now, he just got a bunch of my production and he's going to be showing off some amazing heat. Go give this guy a follow right now on Instagram, the homie Triple G. Go get your genetics. Appreciate you, homie. Low Life Exotics, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Let's see who else. Oh, Arth is in the building. What is good, Arth is? Thanks for tapping in. Johnny G in the building. What's up, Johnny G? Thanks for tapping in. Timothy, what's up, Timothy? Thanks for tapping in. The homie Josh. What's up, Josh? Scales, fins, and feathers. The homie Wiz Constrictors, what is good? Thanks for tapping in, player. Uh, by the way, Patreon family member all day, every day. Big homie, big homie savage. And and reptiles, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. The homie Peter, Norway in the building. I don't know what time it is where you're at, but thank you for tapping in. Uh, what is good? The homie right here. Uh, Gary, outer space reptiles. Thanks for tapping in. The homie Gray Rider, reptiles, what is good? Trap Talk family member, both these guys, by the way. All right, let's wrap this up. So many hitters in the building right now. The homie, uh, welcome to the grow tent. Met this guy at Tinley. Sick ass dude. We're going to end it Vegas style. My homie Dominic from 702 Serpents. All right, we're good. Woo, 17 minutes. Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm super excited because I don't bring enough girl power to this podcast. It's not intentional, but I kind of like that I do because I've only brought in like serious fucking type women that fuck with reptiles to the show. And who I have on right now is backing all this up. She might be one of the heaviest, not like in size or anything. That's for sure. Like not at all. Anyway, she's tapping in. She works at the Reptarium. Um, she's married to Bruce Saunders. She puts up with a lot. She's also friends with me and is, always deals with me when I go into town. But here she is, Jessica Saunders from Thank Hooks. You. What is it? What Hooks and Hooks and Things? Hooks, hooks and, things. and Things, yeah. <laughs> Jessica, Do you know why? You. Because you love Hooks? No. Do you know what suspension is? Body I suspension? Know. Like with the Hooks? Oh my God, you used to do that? <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it in a long time, but I've done it a few times. Oh my God. Okay, the only other, no offense, the only other weirdo that I like that has done that on this show or like for a living or like used to do it on the regular was Tyler Nolan. I didn't know there was other people. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that crazy. <laughs> so, okay, I mean, real quick, before we really get into it, I mean, was this, for how long were you hanging yourself with hooks? Not super long. Like I said, I only did it a few times, but I was actually for a little bit there, um, maybe for like a summer only, uh, learning how to like do the piercing for that. Uh, I ended up falling out with the group and everything, so it never ended up happening, but I participated a few times in like helping and assisting doing the piercing. Is that, why, is that why you and Bruce are like, you know, because he's into weird shit and like, I mean, what, what, what was this before I mean, Bruce? Probably, like, what, probably yeah, why he likes me, right? <laughs> no. What the hell was, what was that, Bruce? Okay, Bruce, listen, you cannot be typical Bruce during this podcast. He can't be loud and like scream in the room because it's, I, I, I'm going to have anxiety problems, please. He's Bruce. over here like cleaning a little bit, so he I just... Know. Deep breath, please, Bruce, please, Bye. for the Bye. people, for the people. <laughs> All right, so Jessica, how are you doing? How's everything going? Good times at Tinley, but more importantly, how, how's your weekend? How's everything? 
Uh, everything's going good. Today we're like uh, doing a lot of work in the reptile room. I, this part behind me looks pretty good right now, but if I go that way a little bit, uh, everything's a mess. If I go that way a little bit, everything's a mess. Uh, right, we're just good. rearranging everything. Um, yep, we got a new cage for our forest cobra, so we're just trying to fit everything in to make room for that. <laughs> So, I mean, let me ask you, how many rooms of reptiles inside your guys' home? Is everything in one room? I mean, because I'm sure you have multiple different species. I know Bruce messes with a lot of different venomous, and I'm sure you have your own stuff. So what all, like, diversity-wise is in one room, or do you have stuff in separate room? Um, well, we were at one point keeping uh, all the snakes in one room, which is actually two rooms with a wall knocked out. Uh, it's the biggest room in the house. And right. then we had another room we were keeping geckos in, but I no longer keep geckos at home. Uh, just from a time standpoint, I don't have time to. We've talked about it before, but like I just don't have time. And um, it's easier to just keep the stuff at work and take care of it. I mean, that's what I was going to say, because the stuff that you would want is like basically zoo type shit at the reptarium. And you could it basically frees you up to do fucking more you know actually freeze bruce up probably for more fucking forest cobras who knows i don't know no um, exactly and those <laughs> he does want more of those for sure he wants a, he wants to breed them he's crazy <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to get to the crazy stuff just yet but trust me we will be talking about all that craziness um at some point in this podcast um but before we get into all that i i just want to know like how much of this passion that I've seen, you know, I've, and I've known you for going on two years now. And ever since I've met you, I've seen you. I remember meeting you at BHB when you're busting your ass during, you know, in that, in that back room and whatnot. And, you know, all the way up to today on Brian's vlogs, going to Tinley with Bruce, your, your passion's really there. So how involved, like, have you been in the, in the hobby was, has it always been like this even prior to the reptarium or like, you know, when did this really grow for you? Well, I've, I've been keeping reptiles for a really long time. Um, I think my first snake that I, I actually lost in my room was a milk snake, and I was, like, probably five. <laughs> oh, uh, so I've been keeping stuff for a long time, but more seriously keeping stuff since I was a teenager, probably, like, 15, 16. Uh, but probably wasn't super involved in, like, the hobby, per se, or the community uh, until I started working for Brian, which was about... It'll be eight years in September this year. So it's been a really eight long time. years. Oh my God. Dude, here I'm thinking like you're almost like an Eric Chambers and Mary type thing. Like you guys were kind of oh. new like them. Wow. That's I never perfect. like being on camera. I'm still weird about it. I don't love it, but um yeah, I never like being on camera, so I wasn't on it for a really long time. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie because how shy you even seemed when I first met you, like you weren't like, you know, like very, I'm not, not that you weren't going, you were working, you know what I'm saying? But like, if, if, if it wasn't for Bruce, I don't think we would have warmed up to each other. So, I mean, I'm sure we would have, but like, you know what I mean? Shout well, to he's Bruce. definitely a good icebreaker for most people for me. <laughs> oh my God. He can, he's an icebreaker for anybody. I mean, oh period. Even if there's a fucking elf in the room, Bruce would come do something just to just makes everyone laugh. And everyone's just like, you know, just live mm -hmm. your life. You know what I mean? Um, all right, this is this isn't about Bruce. We're gonna probably pr talk about Bruce like eighty percent of this podcast because we love him so much. Um, no, okay, but seriousness. Okay, so eight years ago, this is nuts. How did you come across uh, this this job position? How did wh what did you do back the eight years ago? That was, let me do my math. Hold on. So I'm, I'm two thousand two. Says twenty twelve. Right. No, no, no. It was oh, no. Uh, 2014. 2014. My bad. Yep. 2014. So he, wow. Bruce had just gotten out of the army and we just moved back up here to Michigan. Um, my family's from Michigan. Okay. We had been living in North Carolina. Um, so we had just moved back up here uh, and I connected with one of my friends that I had gotten into reptiles originally, like when we were in high school. Right. And um, he actually had some of my original pet snakes, which I got back from him not too long ago. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, he was working for Brian um, for a couple, for not too long at that point. I think maybe like a month. And then they needed another person uh, to do, I think it was assistant colubrid person. So I wasn't taking care of like all the breeders, just all the babies. Cause back then, like we were in the giant warehouse and it was probably like three times the size it is now. Um, 
Wow. So we had like so many baby flu roots. Um, so I assisted with them and then baby ball pythons as well. Uh, but yeah, I got my job through my friend basically. And so, I mean, was, was it kind of like a lot in the beginning? I mean, I'm just curious. I've never, I never had a job working for someone else's collection and I know I've thrown myself in the ringer. I mean, was, were you kind of just tossed into the shit and you learned as you go or how was it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So because like I said, I've been keeping snakes. I kind of knew what to expect. Um, the volume of snakes obviously was like super overwhelming at first. And I will say the first couple days I was like, holy crap, what did I like, what did I get myself into with this? I bet. <laughs> um, what else? Let's see. Yeah, there was one day too that I was doing baby ball pythons. There were like, you know, the big metal rolling racks we have at BHB. Yep. Uh, there were like, I don't know, 20 of them all filled up with uh, shoe boxes of ball pythons, like all just normal ball pythons. And so I was taking care of all of those and I was just like, oh my God. If you know me, you know, I don't really care for ball pythons that much. Uh, right. They, they could be pretty, like the the genetics and everything is super interesting. But other than that, they're just, they're just not my thing. Uh, I mean, I, I've never met. I mean, quit that day. I was like, "Holy crap, this is like not worth it." <laughs> like, you have some people who who dip their hands in everything, like myself. Like, I I am a legit chondro emerald like ball python guy, right? But yeah. when you have when you have the passion that you guys have for venomous ball pythons are not a part of your jam. Yeah, <laughs> like no. if, you, if you're a real venomous person you do not give two shits about a ball python and i've like i maybe found someone interested like oh that's a cool looking one but for the most part yeah, no exactly. i'm telling you right now the venomous people are very like into the venomous and i know why this is a whole nother game and it's like god bless them it's like yeah, it's like you have you have to for luck what is, oh. We're redoing his cage, so this is uh my little bush viper. <laughs> so, okay, Jessica, I, I gotta ask you. Let's let's talk about even pre eight years ago getting the job at BHB. How did you meet somebody like Bruce? I mean, it's it's awesome that the stars aligned by the way it did, huh? Chance by chance, really by chance. Uh, so I was in me. Alabama going to college, and Bruce wasn't in college or anything. Um, <laughs> Alabama. And- yeah. Uh, his friends really weren't either, but uh, one of the girls I met down there in college uh, ended up being friends with, you know, like a mutual friend. So I met, you know, through through them. Okay, and and, and then and then Bruce at that, and then like you know, obviously Bruce at that time had you know, as far as his collection, was it at, at the point where where it's at now, as or did it kind of no. grow at that point? So he was going into the army pretty soon after, like we started hanging out and talking seriously, uh, like, and so he couldn't take anything with him. Uh, basically, at that point, I remember he had I had bought him a tarantula. He had like maybe a couple other tarantulas, um, but I was mainly the snake person at that point. Um, I had, I didn't have anything venomous, but I had like all, I had a bunch of boas. I had like a Burmese python, uh, some other stuff too. Just, uh, my love of reptiles definitely didn't start with geckos. It started more with snakes. And and it's funny you say that because now you're like, basically like the gecko, the the gecko queen at reptarium. (laughs) And, and what I mean by that, you know, I I don't want to spill too many beans here, but I'm coming out with a, a vlog of, you know, my visit at the Reptarium. And I was, I mean, I'm going to display the shit out of your hard work. It's not even finished, obviously, um, mm-hmm. but it's very close. I would say like 90%. Like you have like what, four more enclosures or four more enclosures to fill and then it's done, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. And I think I've even done a couple more since you were there. Like uh, I just need right. to put plants in them, but I finished out the rest of it. So. So was it the fact that you got put in that position is what made you like the geckos like it, to the point where you're at now or like what 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 kind of drove you to that point where you're at right now with with working with geckos? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I had maybe in the past uh, before working for BHB had like a crested gecko um, before, but that was about it. Um, shortly after getting hired and to do all the like. Uh, 
you know, the baby colubrids and the baby ball pythons, uh, someone quit in the gecko department. So they had one person pretty much taking care of all the gecko, leopard geckos was all we had at that point. Uh, so one person was taking care of that department, they quit. Uh, just like no notice or anything. Um, so I got moved the next morning to doing that, which I much, much preferred. <laughs> I mean, and, and it, it, it is kind of tedious, though. I mean, there are like daily routines you have to keep up. I mean, we, we were talking about one thing about having a room full of geckos with plants and everything that you have. It, it's It's kind of like like if you're able to have time to manually spray, it's probably a lot safer to go that right than, than hook everything up on a rain shaver, right? Or or where do you stand? I mean, because I'm trying to figure out where people go wrong in the beginning when they want to go bioactive. Like it's not that I'm against bioactive. It's like I feel like people want to mimic the rainforest so much that they oversaturate and do all these things uh, that are kind of like not on purpose, but, you know, it could drive them out of it. So, I mean, what, what do you feel like is like a good uh, intro – into like a gecko with a bioactive system and all that? Um, I think maybe doing like, like you're saying, maybe not going right off with a misting system, especially if you're not like a super big expert on plants, because right. that's where I, I feel like um, I end up having issues in the reptarium is like, I know a bit about plants, but I'm not a crazy expert on them. So I'll sometimes see a plant and be like, okay, I'm just going to throw this in a cage and try it. Uh, <clears throat> but depending, but the mist system upstairs in the reptarium, like uh, it does saturate a lot of the cage down. So if it's a plant that doesn't do really well with uh, saturated soil, a lot of times it'll die and I'll have to replace it. And that'll happen a lot. Um, if you're doing it to where we were talking about, like where you're just hand misting, you can control better, like what each plant is getting in the cage as far as water goes, uh, which is better for me where I'm just experimenting with different plants and stuff. Um, let's see what else. Uh, definitely, I would maybe still do the isopods and, you know, leaf litter and try to do maybe the ABG and all the other layering. If you're just you know, trying to get into it, but not like jump all the way into it. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I, I want to, if you could help me, I understand what the isopods are like meant for and why people love them and whatnot and why they're, I mean, I don't understand why some of them are really expensive, um, but like an isopod yeah. for the purpose of that, right? Can you kind of break down why people would want isopods inside of bioactive or just whoever out there is thinking like, why would, want, why would anyone want roly polies in their, in their, and they're bioactive for sure and i will say too like uh expect like the first time you try to introduce them to an enclosure maybe they don't always do the best because i had that for sure in the reptarium a lot of them like just died off um and, and that was because of the misting system it was getting the soil too wet for the isopods in there but the purpose of isopods is to help you clean up the cage without you having to actually do anything so it's not the best for like i would say bioactive is probably not the best for like a larger snake like the little bush viper I showed you just a little bit ago, it could do well for that because their poops aren't gigantic. Yeah. Uh, it does well with geckos because they have little little poops. They have a lot of poops, but they're small and they're easy for isopods to find and eat the whole thing pretty quickly. So it helps you keep the cage clean without you having to go through and you know spot clean everything. Um, and also, I want to say it helps the soil too in the in the enclosure with the plants. So based off your experience, like what would be your go-to type soil, you know, because there's different types of stuff that you could put, right? So like if you were to like make a list from scratch, you know, as far as like the type of soil, like chip, like I'm just curious, like what, what, what kind of soil would you put like, you know, and, and kind of direct people that, that way? Okay. So basically the most accepted, like when you're going to do a bioactive enclosure is to use ABG mix, which is, it stands for Atlanta Botanical <laughs> Gardens mix. Bless you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I don't have the list on me, but it's basically a mist, mix of sphagnum moss, peat moss, like the, you know, the ground the up. Right. Uh, burn fiber, 
Um, sometimes you'll see orchid bark in there. There are different mixes people call AVG. I think the original one uses fern fiber, but some will use orchid bark in place of that. Right. Um, and then there's also the charcoal to keep down on the smell. That's the other thing you want to get isopods for. It'll help break all the springtails and isopods help break down things naturally and you shouldn't have a like a swampy smell. You'll get that sometimes if the everything gets over watered. Um, and, 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 and like as far as the over water part goes, is that when you would have to like change it out or like at what point do you, is a cage basically fucked and you're like, I better I got to change this out. Okay, so when you are doing a terrarium, like you're gonna have a few different layers at the bottom before you have uh, your ABG mix. Um, you're gonna have a layer of false bottom of some sort. We use like the orange clay balls. If you've ever seen those, you'll see yeah, them. Like, yeah, I fucking think so. It reminds me of growing weed. Now that I, you know, yeah, hydroponics, that. right? Yeah. Uh, so you usually you'll put a layer of those. You saw in the cages, right? Yep, I saw them. I thought they're sick. Okay, so there's that. Then you put a layer of uh, screen or like weed barrier or something. Screen's better. Weed barrier breaks down over time. Um, then you'll have a layer of sphagnum moss and then a layer of the ABG. So when you see your layer of the uh, the false bottom, when you see that that the water level is getting like above that you definitely want to try and drain it out somehow. So you can either right. like lift up the screen, you know, vacuum out the water. Uh, some of the cages in the reptarium, I actually installed like a little drain that I put a plant to hide it in. Um, but yeah, you could do different things like that. But if you're hand misting, you shouldn't run into that problem. Right. Okay. So I have to ask you, um, and I've asked you this on the vlog and I just want to ask you here on the podcast. I mean, at some point, you know, every day is different, especially working with animals. You don't know what you're going to get into. I mean, it's, you know, you don't know what fucking, you know, they all got moods. Right. Um, yeah. but some days are easier than others. Right. So, and, and, you know, you, you gotta remember too, you know, you work with Barcheck for years, you know, you go back to where he was, had all these allegations against him that that were just false and you know whatever that they were saying you stuck with them right so i'm sure there were probably days it was either awkward or hard to go to work or some shit right but either way i'm just saying you have your most awesomest days and your most craziest days how are you like you know for anyone out there who has crazy and good days and they have to work with animals how are you maintaining that like you know even like emotionally and physically like how, how do you how do you how do you do it Can you rephrase that a little bit? Like, what do you mean? Like, how do I handle? I had, like, like when shit hits the fan, <laughs> basically. I'm, I mean, how do, okay. I mean, like, how do you go out? How do you go about your day when shit is just like hitting the fan? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's just especially when your job is taking care of animals. You know, I mean, if it's once one thing when you have a huge collection and it's like it's something that like you know well that's your, your responsibility, but now your job is also the, taking care of these animals, and I do know that. There's times where I look at myself like, what the fuck am I doing? You know what I'm saying? And and it's hard. It's it's not easy. And I can only imagine what it's like having that kind of, I don't want to say pressure, but I don't know. You are working for Brian Barczyk. For me, I would feel like a shit ton of pressure. I would. I really would. Um, so I'm just curious, like, you know, that type of pressure, how do you? How do you kind of deal with it? And, or, eat, or, eat, or I don't even know if you have pressure. You might not. You might be fucking gangster shit. I don't know. You tell me. I mean, there's for sure pressure. Like I was telling you, I, I, I do a lot there. So uh, I probably, out of everyone that works for him, I probably have responsibility over the most number of animals. Um, but I don't know. I just, I just do it. I'm just I'm like, I have to do it. I have to get it done. So, I'm, I mean, nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> I mean, and, and as far as how you plan out your day, I mean, how how's that go? Like, how's a day to day go at the Reptarium? If you could kind of like walk walk us through that, I have like a bunch of notebooks, and I write all <laughs> kinds of lists, and I never get to the end of them. <laughs> so I'm like always the next day, like okay, I gotta go finish this and finish that, and right. then I'll like go on to the next stuff for the day. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, have to write stuff down a lot. Otherwise, you know, I'd forget things just right. got so much going on. 
I mean, speaking of that, I mean, one thing that, like, dude, I'm, you know, I don't want to say I'm a grown ass man because I am, am very immature in a lot of other ways, but I don't give a fuck. But one thing that I was, ha- I learned to, to to deal with better is death. Working with a bunch of animals, you know, things that you love die. You know, you can't you can't help it. So. I'm sure also working with eight years, okay, eight years mm-hmm. with a collection like Brian Barcheck, stuff that you probably were maybe like, I want to take care of this and it didn't work out. But like, and you're a girl, no offense, but girls have softer feelings, you know, like girls, girls, you know, like Lily, Lily couldn't, Lily could do, Lily could do anything I asked her except for feed. She cannot touch a rat. She doesn't want to go through that. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you have no problem feeding. I've seen you do it. So what I'm saying is, did you were, were you always accepted to like all right this is the circle of life this is how shit happens or did you did it kind of did you kind of get tougher as things happen like i'm just curious how did you build that that cold heart <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a cold heart Shut up. you have to well i'm just saying like like not not a cold uh, heart but like you're not you're not quitting you're not a quitter is what i'm saying like I said, definitely in the beginning, um, it was a little bit harder and you definitely learn to deal with it over time that, you know, when you're working with such a large volume of animals, especially, I'm not, how many animals do you have? Uh, like a re- ballpark. You don't have to give me an ex- exact number. Lily, are you listening? <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I want to okay, like 200, 200. This is okay, so yeah, we have fucking, the fuck ton of animals, right? Like I want um, more. I want more. I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, with that number of animals, you're gonna have some things that unexpectedly die on you. Yes, but it happens for sure. And when we had like thirty thousand plus animals, you can imagine like it would be killing you at the end of the day. (laughs) I I mean, I don't know if you were okay. There was a time that I was talking to Brian. It went. I think it was Vegas. I forget when, but he was Mm -hmm. talking about how things were like so in crazy busy at one point where like he was pulling like 50 clutches 60 clutches a day and like and like he couldn't even keep up with and like i'm like over here like oh i can't wait for the next clutch you know what i'm saying but i can't imagine getting to the point where you're like you're dreading not really dreading but i mean just it it was it was painful for him to go in and pull clutches like but like think about how many of those clutches come every day did you see a lot of that like massive production like were you able were you a part of that so I was like, we are right at the tail end of that because we moved into the building we're in now. How far is it? How far is the Reptarium from the old building? How, what's Not the just, too far, maybe like 15, 20 minutes. And it, it was it like in a business structure, like how this one is, or was it like in a property? It was like a warehouse, like a like a bunch of different industrial, warehouse. like a bunch of different yeah, industrial, industrial warehouses. Warehouse industrial park yeah all right so all right. it was huge and like i said at that point it was what like thirty thousand plus snakes yeah jesus christ <laughs> bro i mean like I, said, I, I, I wanted to kill myself doing all those baby ball pythons <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I have people on here who legitimately have fucking, you know, full time, full time jobs, like careers, and they're still hatching out 200 clutches a year. I don't know how the fuck they do it, but they've been doing it for a while. They don't want to quit their job, even yeah. though they possibly can. I just can't imagine. Like, I mean, I, I, I honestly look up to people like that. I'm like, if you could really, really just be like, oh, I'm waking up to work today. And even though I have fucking uh, over hundred K in the incubator, I'm just going to go to work. Like, fuck God bless you. You know what I'm saying? I, know, like, I, would, I, I wish I had that. I, I just hate people. Boring. I can't imagine like doing anything outside of animals of some sort. The, you know what I mean? The animals, the animals saved me from having to deal with corporate America. I'm just like, I tried to work under the corporate ladder and I'm just so raw in who I am that when it got to the point where I had to kiss ass to get promoted and like be a role model, like the way they want, I just, that, I, that's where I fell down. And I was like, Oh fuck this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't work like that. I would become a miserable fucking human being and I don't want to be miserable. And this is why I just love where I'm at right now. And, you know, I, but like I said, I like Marshall Mendez, uh, Chad, Chad Holker. There's a few people who have really good jobs and they don't want to give it up because it's like, I have too good of a job and I'll keep still keep this going. And you know, they're like in their fifties. I fucking respect the shit out of that. Like, I, I don't know, but I guess I, I don't know. I, I, that's what you're doing right now, basically. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I give you and Bruce a lot of props um, because I would, you got to admit, you know, it, it's a lot easier for him and it's a lot easier for you that you guys are basically on the same level of, of the love for this. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, 
And and, and at, at some point, and you could be, you know, you don't, I don't care if he's here, but is, is there a point where you have to kind of tell him, hey, yo, you need to chill? Like, like we can't do this right now, or or maybe we shouldn't get this or that, or, or is there a time where you guys need to sit down and be like, yo, we need to fucking, you know, we need to figure this out? Yeah, I'm usually the one that's like, right now, I'm usually the one that's like, no, we should probably not. <laughs> we don't well, need to spend money on that right now. I believe that. You're practical. <laughs> Jess, here's the thing with Jess. I, lo I love this, and, and I don't know what the situation is uh, or what the situation was, but there was something where, you know, I always thought, even though, like, I had met you, you still be seem very, like, oh, like, she's so sweet and just, like, but, like, if you need to fucking snap on somebody, you will. And and I've, uh, I have, I don't, I've kind of seen you, like, check Bruce a little bit, but then I heard another story where you, like, check some other person. And, and I was, like, dude, I could now, I could see it now. I, I could see, like, a gangster side of Jessica, which every, every girl, every girl has that. Mad at the neighbors down the street. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You had enough of it. You had enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's what makes you guys strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just can't, it just can't be a free for all. And, and, and even though Lily lets me take the wheel on this, like, she is like kind of keeping me. She's, dude, if I tell her I'm getting a snake, she looks up the species. Like, she doesn't let me just get things anymore. She's fucking <laughs> like, she tries to look at the market value. She's not kidding. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to pull some stuff like, oh, I got the snake. It'll, it's only going to get three feet long. But it's, I it's, pulled, I did that for the first, I did that for the first three years <laughs> until, until this, po until the podcast started blowing up and she started hearing me talk. She's like, wow, like you got all that? Like, <laughs> fuck. Hope you guys are fucking happy. Jesus. Um, all right. So I want to kind of talk about um, some of the bit, like what are some of the things you've learned or grasped? at the reptarium that has kind of carried you where you're at or even helps you with your collection at home you feel like you know uh, do you have any like things that stand out to you um i think being involved just like uh in helping fill out all the cages and enclosures uh for the different species and stuff i think that right. definitely has helped us uh spruce up our cages and stuff at home um when I'm doing cages for the reptarium, I try to look at the species and where they're from and try to replicate it a little bit, you know, right. at least as best as I can uh, to look like the uh, the area they're from. Uh, so I try to do that here as well. Um, now, let's see. Yeah, what? No, I was going to say, like, you know, I don't know. Like, for instance, are, 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 are you keeping a lot of bioactive stuff at home? Like, meaning, like, all the cobras and stuff and, and, and venomous are, like, kind of bioactive? Or do you have anything, like, on paper? Is there anything keeping, like, on the simple type route? When we're quarantining an animal, like a new animal, we'll keep it on paper. Um, and then right now, we just have one thing on paper because we need to get we need to get substrate for this giant cage, Bruce Scott. <laughs> for How the big is the cage? Cobra. Oh, for the forest cobra. Okay. Oh, I don't want to dip into that. I, I, we're gonna have. I, I'm gonna yeah, spill the later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about um, that without him. I forgot. But, where uh, I was that. No. Okay. No. So uh, to go back to what you're saying, though, you know, I'm just. Do you feel like if you didn't? I'm just saying. Typically, do you feel like getting bioactive is easy for almost anybody to get down, or do you feel like bioactive has only been good because you you've been working there, like, and you know, like. Can the, can the majority of people get bioactive going, you feel like? I would say it's not the best for every everything. And I was saying, too, uh, semi-bioactive can be really good, too, where it's not like if you just don't want to add the isopods um, and you just want to keep your pot or your plants in little pots and stuff, right. uh, that can be really easy to maintain. That way you could take the pots out. And, you know, mix up all the soil, make sure everything's spot clean, put everything back the way you want to. Um, so that's a good way, like a good midway point. Um, I wouldn't keep, I was going to say too, the cobras and a lot of the stuff in here is not full bioactive. We have the bush vipers fully bioactive, but I don't have real plants in with a lot of the cobras because they poop so much. Dude, they, they're, I mean... I don't have cobras, but I've been around a couple, and I have false water cobras. I know they're not the real thing, but I see the way they shit, and they shit comparable yeah. to the fucking cobras. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, I would never go bioactive for my false water cobra. What a joke that would be. No. I would be constantly I changing shit out. I wouldn't do it for, like, 
a lot of larger snakes and stuff like that, they're going to just destroy a lot of the bioactive stuff that's in there. Um, right. I think it works really well for geckos. Uh, it works really well for frogs. Um, some people will do like certain species of colubrids, I guess, but. I mean, to, to, since you just brought up colubrids, right? Like, I it sucks because I don't want to say my heart is like falling away towards colubrids. I, I'm I, that just project wise. Like, I had a bunch of different boegas at one point. Now I just have cyaneas and uh, what else do I have? That's it. I mean, uh, and then the other colubrids are the false water cobras. But what are some of the colubrids that you like the most? Like, or what are I mean, what are ones that you that will always be your favorite colubrid? I like the boega, obviously, but um, other than that, like, there's a ton. When I first got into snakes and stuff, I didn't, I didn't like colubrids. I thought they were kind of ugly and meh. But um, working at BHB, like, especially when I was taking care of all the babies and stuff, definitely gave me an appreciation for them. Right. Um, let's see. I really like house snakes. Weirdly enough. Dude. <laughs> uh, who has house snakes? Is it Garrett Hartle? I think Garrett Hartle has house snakes. Because check this, are these are those the ones that are those are those the ones that look like a Burmese? They have like a face like a Burmese. Yeah, they have like a little python looking head, but they yes. stay tiny. Yeah, Dude, uh, we I have. I was gonna buy ones. some of those. We have some albino ones. We have like sun glow ones. We have a bunch. You, you have want any black some? Ones? You have any black ones? Uh, we might. I can I ask saw... uh, Brian this week. Yeah, hey, let me know because there was a. Actually, no, don't. Brian, dude, Brian, what's up with that guy? He won't he won't sell me a snake. Like, I don't know what I gotta do to get a snake from this guy. You have to I, ask Lori because she I already like, did. Lori, Lori didn't help me either. She's like, I got you, MJ. And then I, and then I have to wait to the next trip. And then I couldn't even talk to Lori this time. I almost feel like it's destined to be like this, and it's fine. It's just like Brian Barchek, Miguel Garcia, like two of the two of my biggest big guys mm -hmm. in the game who support me the most, who won't sell me a snake. It's fucking crazy. I got money. I'm not asking it. I'm just, yo, take it. Take my money. Yeah, I know. It's, they're funny. It's because, you know, you <laughs> know what's so weird weird. Saying, Like, he, he forever has been wanting a mangrove from Brian, and Brian's just been hoarding, hoarding them the whole time. <laughs> oh, I, would, I, would hoard, I would hoard mangroves, too. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I mean, we finally got babies. one, though. We finally got one from, um, can I say that, though? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got one from Will Nace, like, a week ago. From when we went and picked up those snakes, Will, Will Nace. Oh, cool. Tight. Right. How big? It's a, it's huge, actually. Where's she at? Like eight feet. Yeah, she's under that table right there. Bruce, come sit down with us. I'm over it, bro. Like I'm, I'm I here. Bruce Saunders, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Brucey. Hey, Have a chair, Bruce Hello. Saunders. Because this Hello. next topic. This next topic needs Bruce anyway, so whatever. This is this is, this is going to work out. I wanted to wait an hour and five minutes. For We're codependent, so yeah. I mean, it's easier to just talk to both of us. She's right. There he She's is. Right. He got his haircut. Oh, what? you know it. <laughs> He's what? a new man. <laughs> he looks like Bruce. He looks like 2017 Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, Bruce. Right when we first met. Back yeah, you had hair when you first met. <laughs> oh wow, Bruce Saunders. How are you doing, buddy? Oh man, I feel ten pounds lighter with all the hair on top of my head. Hey, dude, Honestly. long hair does suck after a while. You just get over it. You're like, "Fuck, this uh, is." It gets I, hot. I, honestly, I'm I'm glad I was able to donate it. I I waited long enough so I could donate it, and and then uh, I I donated wig, wigs for kids in Michigan here. Hey, Bruce, I've already told you this, and I'll say this on the live. What a babe! What a chick! She is so awesome. <laughs> Because, you know, you, I, I think you're amazing, but a lot of your amazingness comes from who you're married to, I feel like, you know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, of course, man, 100% everywhere. Now, I want to ask you guys both this because not every couple has the level of dangerous collection that you guys have. You know, we're talking about forest cobras, but this is like just one of many venomous that Bruce has been really passionate about. So w w you two, you know, and, and, you know, I don't want to like, I'm knocking wood here, but what are, what are protocols that you guys are doing? Like, what are some things that you guys are really careful about when it comes to either handling or just like wanting to look at a venomous and, and whatnot, if you could kind of tell us what your guys is like, you know, one-on-ones are and whatnot. So, so number one, number one rule is generally stay away from free handling. There are, uh, um, I, I personally know there are occasions that may call for for uh, a long or larger animal to be free handled, but 
but when it comes to animals that I keep here, that that's not necessary. Um, but, uh, uh, there's that. And I also, um, we have a little Velcro envelope that literally sits right about six feet away from where I'm sitting right here. That's uh that's a list of different species by protocols, anti-venin used for them, um, the doctors that are local that I, that we can contact that are toxicologists and also, uh, um, venom one numbers, things like that, that like, you know, the, the, the big dogs up there in, uh, uh, uh the, 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 the great wide world of the government. <laughs> so as soon as he's talking about getting a snake, it is basically you have to order those things. And then what is my role for you? Uh, no mambas, no tie pants. No. Okay, but why? I mean, you have other stuff that could kill you. They're just so fast, though, and I, like unpredictable. And they'll. Bro, I, but he has I, fast. I, have, I, well, there's but, a, well, I also don't. I, have I, I agree, Jessica. I'm, I'm not saying get mom. Trust me, don't get mambas. I'm scared to death. Well, I, would, of what you, I would absolutely love them, but I have absolutely no experience with them, and I'll admit to anybody, I, if I don't know how to, if I don't know how to, if I can't pin the animal's head, I, I'm not pulling it. I'm not taking it. They act, <laughs> you know? they act, at this point, point, they act different than the animals we already keep. And like he was saying, he doesn't have uh, experience outside of here with those. So. I'd be afraid complacency would set in and I would get bit by something stupid. And I feel like, you know, that's the thing. Like, I, I mean, you can't help when you're doing something every day for so long. Like the natural human might get complacent and that's when it fucking happens is at that one moment i've been bit by everything in my room except for that rattlesnake i had thank god i got rid of it but i used to handle her a lot like not not publicly but on the low i loved mm -hmm. i loved that experience so much one-on-one -on -one with her that i just you know and i kept getting caught by the wife and i just knew i was like this is not good like this is because I don't have a protocol. I don't have a doctor. If I get bit, I'm just running to the hospital. Like, hey, help me. You know what I'm saying? And that's not the move. Like, this is why I respect having people like you on a show like this who keep venomous the right way because there are ways of doing it. Like, you could get away with being a hillbilly with certain animals. You know what I'm saying? But you can't really be a hillbilly with fucking cobras in this kind of, you know, collection. You have to have protocol. Like, there has to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, like honestly, like, uh, um, that was that was kind of what let what allowed this all to even happen for Jessica, especially like even for myself. Honestly, if I were to be honest with myself, like, I, like I don't think I'd be too comfortable with having these animals even just feed away from me without having some sort of like plan for the worst, you know, like something right. just fully like step by step. Like, here's what we got to do. Let's calm down. Let's all right, we got this. We're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to go to the hospital. We're going to make this happen. There is nothing to be afraid of. We're going to make, you know what I mean? Like there's always, there's always the, the death part, but there's a, but we, we are trying to prepare for everything. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's just some things you just like, I mean, you can only prepare for so much. And the thing is, it doesn't hurt. And w w with venom is you could, you could, you got to do everything you could possibly do. Um, and I don't know, like I, I, at least I knew, Cause you gotta understand, bro. There's so many hardhead people out there who know they shouldn't have venomous, and they have them anyways. And I'm just like, I knew that that one rattlesnake could fuck up, could possibly fuck up everything that I'm in love with right now, just because I know how I am. Like I know me. Like I'm not an idiot. Like I know I'll keep wanting to touch it. So I can't have fish. I can't hold fish. Um, and I I want to hold a fish. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. Absolutely. I'm just I'm I, I just wish, you know, and it's a shame too because I've had you know I've had people on this show who've you know free handled and whatnot and it's not like i feel like they're bad people but i feel and like not, and, a, and i don't mean even like downplay yeah. it or anything no like, no, no, no 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 and they it, it, their choice it, it, it is their choice but like there's this other people who don't understand that this is their life that's not your life and mm -hmm. and like you know there's so many copycats out there right like people don't know like you know like if anyone is out there purpose, like, you know, they just get into something and they want to show themselves handling a rattlesnake, they're only doing it for personal clout. They just want it because it gets yeah. them attention. If you're out there, try, if you're out there and you think you're gaining a legit following off posting live feeding videos, if you legit think live feeding videos is getting you the right kind of attention, like I'm talking about a rat squealing fucking and you're laughing at it and shit like that. If you think that's the kind of fucking clout that's going to elevate you and get respect in a hobby like this, you're a joke. I'm telling you right now. Let me ask you this. Would you fuck with somebody who, who posts nothing but live feeding videos and, and like no. laughs at it and commentary at it? 
I mean, I, how old are we? I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I mean, I hunt, I love to hunt. I like, I have no issue with, with like taking an animal's life, but, but for, an, for an actual like benefit, not, not, not to, I don't enjoy that. Like, that's not, that's not what it's about. It's never been. Actually like not. I mean, because I mean, at the end of the day, like you are gaining a bunch of people who aren't even really in this hobby. You're gaining a, you're gaining a, a bunch of attention from weird sickos out there yeah. who are like, yeah, man, show me more of that, you know. And they don't even probably own anything. They just like death or some shit weird. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is, so a lot more I'm psychological saying, going on. <laughs> but like, that's just one example at like the free handling and just just like so much of this bozo shit that gets put out there that people think it's okay to do this, so they try to mimic it, they try to copy it, and they think like this is gonna get me there. And it's like you think you're the first person to ever post a free handling fucking video, and that's why you got two thousand views. You think you're the first person to post a fucking live rat getting killed? Go look at other fucking video feeding videos on YouTube. The most randomest person has like two million views on a rat getting destroyed by a, a monitor. You think he's living in fucking the Bahamas right now off that? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like you're totally. just a fucking like you gotta. And it, dude, this is why social media paints a picture that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like. Oh man, like people are getting driven off social media to try to make a living, but they don't understand that people who even make money off social media have so much other stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? And to really make money off YouTube, like you know how big your following needs to be. You guys, I mean, you work with Brian Barcheck. That's one of the only real guys making money off YouTube right now, along with yeah, a couple absolutely. other people. I, <laughs> I, I will tell you, because he tell dude, we talk, and I know motherfuckers out there who ain't making shit and, and they have all this following and stuff like that. So it's just such a bullshit picture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you, yeah, you, yeah. Following, you, yeah. following doesn't like mean Brian shit. Brian has so many other things going on besides YouTube to make money. Like, <laughs> and you know what's crazy is like there's vlogging. Something always happening when you go visit Brian. It's never yeah. like, oh, hey, what's up? He's like, no, hey, man. No. You know, it's like boom, 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 boom. You know, I, I, I kind of got jealous. You know, and not, you know, I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me he was gonna have guests when I came over Sunday. So I thought I was going to have them all to myself. And I was like, yeah, me and Brian, you know, but he had this beautiful family down there and he's like, Hey, MJ, what's up? We're going to go to the they're death. The nice museum. People too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they're, they're awesome. I love him. But he's like, yeah, we're going to go to the death museum. And I'm like, death museum. I'm like, Brian. Oh yeah. Hey, show him the bone saw. I bought a bone saw. Yeah. Apparently that's it's actually creepy, cut through actual human. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had multiple surgeries. I've had stitches. Like that kind of shit gives me the weebie jeebies, bro. Like I can't see Dude, stuff. Oh, I love it. It's so cool. It's like it's like got somebody's soul attached to it or something, you know? When yeah. I was the one of the things I did myself as I did to myself as a kid at a young age, and and it's like I did this to myself. Like I conned my way to get this. I conned this so I could get my way. And I watched a couple VHS videos when I was like six called "Many Faces of Death." Have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. it's fucked up and, and and if you're one of those weirdos you're probably gonna go look it up i wouldn't but i, I like kind of forced myself to watch it and it's like beheadings it's like people dying Dude, that's, that's and, right up her alley that's her kind of movie you're a sick it. one yeah. <laughs> she, she, she oh you're a, you're a sick one hey bill stegel I bill <laughs> hey bill stegel condro legend this is the condro Whoa, the condro community out. this is a mayor this is a mayor of condro town in texas right here bill stegel bro in the building dude, absolutely so cool. dude oh my god dude thank you bill i appreciate yeah, you brother you. um listen um yeah <laughs> fuck and I, I really feel like that's why death was so what it was to me before i got into animals you know what i'm saying like i avoided having to see it because of that and like at the end of the day i was just like what the fuck and then you know when, when and then now i got into snakes and things out of my control were dying and i remember shout you know andrew Alcevedo, you fucking you know little little andrew you know he was like hey brother uh, if you have a faint heart, you're not going to make it in this. He told me that he's like, mm -hmm. if you have, if you can't get over the fact that things will die and you want chondros and all this shit, if you don't, if you want other things than ball pythons, you're not going to make it. And, and I took that personal. Cause I was like, I am going to make it. So I'm like, all right, so you need to shut up. Like, don't cry about this shit. Like, let it, let it go. And, uh, yeah, dude, I mean, it just wasn't easy to deal with, but at the end of the day, like, you know, you guys know when you dabble into shit, getting stuff from people you don't know. Like I was getting imported animals and I was getting them like dead. Like I was like, what the fuck is this? And then beating myself up and shit like that. And 
I mean, especially with the animals that you're into, like yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not so very getting a bunch. But of I'm, I'm, but stuff. I'm curious for with the venomous collection you guys have, especially that forest cobra. Who are you guys getting your venomous from? Is it from breeders or is that coming from? You know, is that imported? And while you're talking, I'm gonna take a quick piss. I can hear. It. Go ahead, go ahead. So, like uh, a lot, a lot of the a lot of the animals that we get really kind of come randomly. Like uh, um, some some are surrenders. I would say probably about most of your viperians that we have here are just some level or another or surrender, or they're given to us at a cheap price because they're getting rid of it for this reason or that reason. And uh, uh, um, and that's that's a lot of where that came from. As far as the elephants that we have, though, the ones that we've raised from babies. Like the Naja Naja, the ja Jasmine, the White Leucistic, a lot of the albinos, the stuff like that. Moira, the two spitting cobras, those things. Those were all bred captively, so we we res we raised them from babies. Um, whereas the forest cobra is probably one of our few that few late term Egyptian, captives. Right? Uh, that and the Egyptian captives. cobra. That's right. I forgot about her. Uh, the Egyptian cobra is up here above my head here. But, uh, but they but they were all uh, uh, captive bred. Uh, well, everything was captive bred except for those two. So and, I'm uh, sorry. The know, forest cobra. The forest cobra came from who? As a, so a friend of mine named Justin Finley. He's an importer, but he's a late term captive. He came in about uh, about one one year or so before I got him. So he was he was already got gotten all his shots and everything, and that was the only reason I actually purchased him was because like wasn't really because of the size but it was mainly mainly because of the fact that he he had gone through the full full cycle of medication mm -hmm. that needs to be done for an imported animal and that's that's right. more than i can personally do I, I don't have access to the medications uh i i have an exotic vet that i go to but even her like it, it's it's a it's a large expense to go go through her so if i if i can avoid it i can right i mean that's the thing too it's like i mean you have stuff that could illegally be brought over here especially like from mexico and shit like that and, and it's kind of like the abronia you know like there's some things that like you should definitely know who you're picking up these animals from like it's you know just because you don't want to support somebody who's smuggling animals in or something like that you know what i'm saying yeah absolutely um, yeah and uh, i generally try to vet people the best way i can uh I, right. like there's only so much you can figure out about a person but like if Generally, I don't buy from somebody unless I ask at least two or three other people like, hey, have you heard of this guy? Do you know who this is? Have you met him before? Things like that. Those are the questions that generally ask just because like, like it's not even really just not even strictly just because of like, hey, I don't want to get in a smuggled animal. It's also because I don't want to I don't want to get ripped off. I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on the snake. And then some and it turned out to be some guy who just just took my money and didn't didn't have an animal at all. Right. <laughs> That, um, I would say there's a genetic uh, like positive to getting animals that are imported, though. Like you're just you're getting right. <clears throat> new genetic material, and as long as you have the intention yeah. to breed, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Like if you're getting, if you have the intention of just getting an animal for a pet, it's really a bad idea. But, and, um, and that's generally like any any animal that I bring in. That's whitening the genetic pool. I yeah, that's, that's a good idea in any, some cases. Any animal that we try to bring in that's a late term captive or, or anything like that, that's 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 our hope is initially that we would be able to breed the animal and be able to actually like make the make the genetics a little bit stronger without having to uh pull it strictly from one one source. You know what I mean? Uh, things might get touchy right now, and, and I don't don't take this in any disrespect because like I said, you guys are doing it right, I feel like, but as a whole, as a majority. God, this might make some people mad. I don't feel like people should be keeping venomous. I don't. I don't think they're. Uh, I don't think enough people are, could grasp what you guys have grasped. I don't think enough people care to even want to grasp what you guys grasp. I'm sure, Bruce. If if free handling, like if people really didn't give, if we were in Indonesia, if we were in Indonesia, right, you would you would probably free handle because you you would take that risk. But you right, I mean, I, I don't know. Would you or not? Right. I mean, let's be honest. If you're in a country and it really wasn't bad. Would you free handle? If I was in a country where it probably wasn't necessarily negative and I was not married. Right. That would Indonesia. That, 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 that You're not going to be married to her in Indonesia. I have a harsher opinion than he does. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I honestly, like, so um, I, my my opinion on free handling is pretty, pretty neutral. Like, I, I, I understand the negatives of it on our society and what, or what our culture here is in America. And I understand that there are some people outside of here that do it. 
that are just different. Maybe they've just got some training from some voodoo guy that like gave them blessings upon venomous snakes. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I can't, I can't claim to understand that beyond, beyond what I know personally, you know, I know this, I know this for a fact. I know that I would not be where I was at if it wasn't for my wife to put me in my place to realize like, Hey, idiot, like you, you're not doing the right thing. And, and it, you know, what's funny. It wasn't, and you know, guess who I was sending these videos to, I wasn't posting them, but like every time I was picking her up out of the cage and I was sending her to me, I was sending pictures to Miguel forest, Steven, and Miguel thought it was cool. Don't get me wrong. It's Miguel. Right. But like Forrest was like, Hey, MJ don't like, he kept telling me stop. Like, and I was like, what? Stop. Like, what do you mean? This is sick. Right. And guess what? I'm not going to lie. I post, I used to post the shit out of live feeding videos. Cause I, I did think like, dude, this is, this is cool. And it is getting attention. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. Let me explain this real quick. I once was posting live feeding videos. It wasn't like my my jam. It wasn't all I did. But every now and then I would fucking show my chondro eating, you know, something live. And Forrest really, like he would make me promise him, can you stop? Like MJ, like I'm down to do this podcast with you, but stop posting live videos. And I and 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 I realized, dude, there's a lot more in this than fucking like why do I need a wait, hold on. Like, look who's trying to fuck with me. Forrest Fanning's trying to be my boy, Stephen Cush, right. Cody Bartolini, Brian Barcheck. Do any of these guys post fucking weird fucking videos like that? And no, and I talk about this all my time. I you you are who you associate say, you you are who you associate your god damn it. Association. I'm trying to say association is everything. If you associate yourself with trash, you are trash. That's what I, that's what I believe in. And so I stopped. I was like, dude, I don't want, I don't want these, I don't want my own homies thinking like, oh, I got this fucking guy who like can't get it together and has to post live feeding videos to get attention. And dude, it, it got the wrong, it didn't get the real attention that I have right now. So all I'm saying is it's unfortunate, but with the legislations, things hitting the fan, Cobra's being wild in fucking Texas and Florida and stuff like that. Dude, yeah. I feel like you better have a life. Like you should go through an application process. Like I don't want to sound like this. Right. Michigan doesn't have like any of that in place, so I feel like I that's kind of unfortunate. Um, because honestly, with all this stuff going through, it's hard to like argue keeping venomous snakes, isn't it? Like it's hard to come up with reasons why people should be able to do that, just like willy nilly with no experience, no no protocol in place. I kind of like I kind of like the idea of like you purchase a permit for each individual snake you have. Yeah. So like there's but a that's gonna be impossible to do. That's a thing. Like it's unfortunate, but that's gonna be impossible. Like everything I'm talking about is like asking for 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 world peace. Like dude, it's like. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the reason why I'm scared is because there is going to be a point where this shit that's going to house and passing house and all that, like they're going to have all this free handling, loose venom and shit on their rap sheet against us. And like, who knows what the news is going to come out with next week? We don't know, bro. Like, we don't know. Like, it's bizarre. Like I remember, yeah, we, have no, we have no control of what gets put out into the media. Well, that's why but, I don't agree with like, really like po like if you want to free handle free handle do whatever but like port portraying that as the way that like things should be done um is probably not the best look on our community right she's now. trying to be nice she yeah. should like she she's just trying to be like it, like get, like I I, 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 I realize I realize I, I realize nice does not get you the truth that's all I gotta say like that's, that's true. And, and, and honestly I love you, like, I love you. I, I I have I am close with quite a few free handlers and and I know they Me too. Uh, I I appreciate them and I love them to death but even even that the same like it's a really hard argument to sit there and say like hey here's what I'm doing but you shouldn't do it and then all of a sudden that politician looks at that and goes well you're still kind of telling people to do it regardless of that you know yeah. like I, I don't know it, like it's a lot it's you can't, tell, you can't tell one person to do it and say you're not capable that's just like it's just that's that you know yeah people like me you say that to me and if i wasn't married here's the thing like i'm saying if i wasn't married and i didn't have my wife i would probably want i'd probably be a wannabe west coast tyler nolan i swear to god i would i would probably think dude if i'm telling you even forrest couldn't keep me from free handling what really kept me from doing it was my wife and thank god i fucking put that shit down because 
I mean, like I'm grew, I grew out of it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I understand when you first get into something like this, you, you have like a new mentality where you think like something that is cool is something that's just, it's just another, it's just another feeding dude. Just who cares? Like keep going. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just, you're looking for a reaction from somebody who's never seen it and who either loves the rat and gets all fucking flustered or who's like, whoa, that's cool. But like, I'm just saying like, there's way other cooler things to kind of yeah. get attention. And, and, and that goes from, more than just live feeding, it goes from free handling, and 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 it sucks because, dude, I think fucking there are good, there's some really good free handlers out there. I hate that I'm saying this, but it's yeah. like there's no, people who are meant for it. Like, there's, there's people it, that yeah. are really great at it, and then you know, there is, and like, and like been doing it like, for bro, a long time. So you better but, be ready to you better be ready to die for this shit, and that's why I respect Tyler, bro. Like this guy, literally on his deathbed fucking i don't know how many doses of ketamine they had in this guy and they thought he was dead they thought he was going to be done he comes back to life with one index finger but whole, and then like waits a couple months and go holds the same fucking cobra again yeah, yeah. that almost made me mad that i couldn't believe he did that but like dude you ain't gonna he ain't gonna change a man like that like he's he is in it like that's his life He's an extremist, but he's all about what he loves. He's a Floridian. You ain't gonna tell that guy what to do. I don't care who you are. You ain't you yeah. ain't stopping you ain't stopping Tyler Nolan. And that's why I do, you know, as much as like I'm like, don't free handle. I Tyler, I what the fuck am I gonna say to him, dude? What am I, I mean, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, I mean, like, I'm not gonna go up to any of them and be like, you don't do that. Don't but, you know? I'm not gonna well, that's not. To that's do, honestly but... not my business. It's not my business to tell someone you can't do something. It's just, it's just my personal. Opinion. I don't. I don't pay their bills. They don't. They don't. They don't pay my bills. I don't pay their bills. If they're, if you're Absolutely. not paying their bills, then you have nothing. You shut the fuck up. That's it. Yeah. They, hey, they don't you have do you. I do me. Right. <laughs> now, okay. To kind of uh, steer to the most current topic you know i mean how, how do you guys feel having this many venomous and having us arc having a battle all this shit right now i mean at, at all does it worry because you know, i'm sure you know brian's gotten letters from the city before uh, over random stuff so i mean like how are you guys like i don't want to say prepared but have you guys even thought of the thought of like fuck what if they're like yo we have to get rid of the venomous or like what, what would happen like what would you even have you even thought of that so I, I I think about it almost every day. To yeah. be honest with you, wow. uh, it's really but, scary. <laughs> uh, it's 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 it not something that it's not something that I really try and let it be the reason that stops me. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, uh, for the most part, like I guess with me and our me and Jessica, it's always been like, all right, well, worst case scenario, we can always change our environment. We can always change our situation. We can always make things work for our, for our benefit, whether that be selling the animals or necessarily lending them out to people that, that, that might be able to take care of them. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to actually push any of my animals on someone that doesn't want them. But that being said, I, I feel like we're, we're in a huge community where there is, plenty of support where where if we needed it we could take it yeah i mean uh, okay other than michigan i mean where, have you guys ever thought about moving anywhere else florida <laughs> why well you can't it's even so have funny. venomous it, it, well I, honestly it's not even about the venomous it's because it's close to family close to my family in alabama but i don't want to live got, in alabama you got family in, in uh in uh in florida tampa bay okay Okay, I'm looking for lighter. Um, but okay, hold on, Bruce. If you could remind me, I mean, I always call you Alabama boy, but where you where were where you you spent primary your life? Where? So my so I'm a military kid, so I everywhere you know, Germany, though. But I was originally born in Germany. Uh, and, what? And I, Is that why you could I drink so good? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I was born overseas, and then I I, I went to spent time in Colorado. I've lived in South Carolina, I've lived in Georgia, and I've lived in Alabama primarily, uh, uh, but a little bit in Florida when I was a little older. Uh, I, I think I was 17 when I first moved to Florida, and then I stayed there till I was 19. Then I moved to California. What part of Cali? I, for, I forget where you where were you at. No, I stayed in, uh, near Huntington Beach. Uh, um, it was this is actually not too far after I got arrested in Laporte, Texas. So I ended up arrested. You got arrested. 
It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I got arrested but, a long time ago, but oh, I want to yeah. know what you got arrested for. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't talk about. It. But anyways, but um, the uh, uh, hold sorry. on, whoa, whoa, time out. <laughs> okay, well, that's, actually, you're lucky. I asked Jessica if there's anything we couldn't talk about. She said, "No, we're good." So you're lucky. I I didn't I mean, I, 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 no, honestly, that was what she said. I didn't say shit. <laughs> uh, either either way, but I, but I ended up staying near Huntington Beach. Uh, like I got to walk up and down the pier. And then I got a, uh, and then I went as far as San Francisco, and I didn't go much further than that. Bruce, it's gonna kill me, dude. What did you do? You're not like a pedo, are you? Or you are you on Catch a Predator or anything like that? Really? You went right to pedo. I, like, like, I watch that show all the time. I've never seen you on it. Like you went right to that. Like that's an extreme. Like couldn't have been drugs. Like you know they got this a weed. Something, this is something no. This is something no would say. No, because I mean, like, come on, bro. I, I, I talk about how many, I've been in pot with drugs. I've fucking done time. Like, I, come on, I can't be that bad. I, 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 caught, I, caught, a, I caught a drug charge. What kind uh, of drug? And I, and I those <laughs> was it a lot? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. It no, was okay. a lot of money. Let's put it that way. It was a lot of fucking money. <laughs> how much? Uh, how much time did you do? I can't. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to talk about. It. I love you, brother. I'll talk to you personally about that. I dude, you, you talk to me, you talk to the trappers, bro. I'm none of the. I'm just kidding. All right, I, I, I am curious, you. and, I love you. and right this there, is right your there, fault. Right this is your <laughs> fault. It's your fault. Okay, let me ask you this: Did somebody take your manhood? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, somebody did. Oh my god, I feel terrible. Oh Fuck no, bro. <laughs> We're gonna end this, guys. I appreciate no, that, it. It's outdoor only. Let's put it that way. <laughs> But how old were you? Was this what? Why you were you in the military at the time? Actually, before the military, I was eighteen. It was just a misdemeanor, like whatever it was, misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. It wasn't a big charge, but it was annoying. All right, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off, and I'm gonna find out what this is. If this is fucking nothing, I'm gonna be. So I don't care. I don't care if you don't think it's nothing. I don't want to talk about it. On All, right. Fucking All right. All right. I'll leave it alone. I'll stop. I'm just gonna. Stop. I love you though. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Let's talk about ball pythons. <laughs> I had him out. <laughs> hey, no, hold on. Really though, I mean, really, can I? You guys want some ball pythons? I'm just scared. No. You guys want some no, ball pythons? No. You guys like ball pythons? Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Now let's. I, okay, let's ser serious topic. I mean, kind of getting back to what I was saying about the whole people keeping venomous. Um, Stephen, Stephen Desiree, investing heavily into venomous i just did a fucking tour on their uh, oh uh on their cool. venomous collection <laughs> the cool yeah, shit. Really cool stuff. bro nuts and that's like i'm telling you they have way more i just i was just like sweating and i was hungry i got over it so um they have a lot okay but what i'm saying is they they do want to breed too like they have ambitions yeah. of breeding but that scares me like like it, theoretically if you, like forest cobras you want to breed that forest cobra right yeah Absolutely. How many eggs? How many eggs? How many eggs? If everything goes right, what's an average clutch of a forest cobra? 18 to 20. <laughs> okay. You have 18 to 20 little forest fuckers. Okay. Who are what are you? Who's, who's buying them? I'm keeping <laughs> every one of them. I you want can't them keep 20 forest cobras, Bruce. This is I insane. want to keep them. <laughs> Jessica, are we thinking about this? The breeding part? That's scary. I understand having a collection, educational. Well, we it. We're not get, we're not getting species like and being like, oh, we're breeding everything we have. Um, <laughs> you just have a fem good luck finding a female forest cobra anyway. Um, oh, is that that's what she's banking on? She's banking on I won't find one. That's all right. I got you. <laughs> I'll find one. I know you will. I'm not. I trust me. I mean, and, and then I. Uh, so what? We're only planning on breeding a few different things. We got the white lip vipers recently. Um, they're a smaller species, but they're. So really I, I got to ask you about the smaller species. Are they fed on a different schedule than your bigger cobras? Like, are they fed more often, less? Like, how how's the dieting? Diversity? Almost kind of like almost kind of like green tree pythons. Like like you want to kind of almost do it two to three weeks, like depending on their pooping and everything like that. Like you don't want to really want to feed them every week because they have a slow metabolism. Obviously, being tree animals, they're not going to really move a lot around a lot. Yeah. Right. But um, they're pretty pr honestly. Like 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 uh, after uh, at this point now, keeping a lot of different tree viper species, they're they're probably one of the easier ones out of the venomous snakes to yeah. keep. <laughs> I mean, because they're like a green tree python, but venomous. You know what I'm saying, right? Absolutely. And it, 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 you know, I mean, it's not like you're handling the green tree python that much. Same thing with the 
with my bush, bush vipers and all the Asiatic species I have. I will say this, and I, maybe I want you maybe compare something to this situation because, I mean, if it's one thing, like I, I respect that my own Patreon members come to me and they're like, MJ, dude, for like a year now, I've been thinking about getting into chondros, but I'm not ready. And I'm like, why aren't you ready? Like, what, 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 what is it that you're not ready about? Well, you yeah. know, I just. You know, just because I hear this, I hear that. And like a lot of this stuff, horse horror type scenarios that they're hearing is from breeding. And and they're just inquiring about getting one. And I try telling them, I'm like, yo, getting a green tree python dialed in is so fucking easy. As long as you can yeah. control yeah. the temperature of the room, the room and, and do, you know, frequent water changes, spray it every now and then. If you're able to get away with that in your area, dude, it is the best thing on earth. Right. But then you have something like the Boland's python. Right. Yeah. Which is like a whole wow. another fucking, which is an eight thousand dollar animal for one thing. It's like a goddamn unicorn. It's like it, it's the most dreamiest animal, but it's so easy to have crash. It's so easy to have to go downhill. I mean, is there anything out there comparable with the venomous? Like that's like all right, this is easy to keep, but this right here is like similar to the bullens, where different temps and all that shit matters and and whatnot. I'm just curious. So I've never kept them personally, but I've always felt like Ming Shen Vipers were probably one of the, like, like they're the bullens of the venomous world. Like, they're the big, the big, like, they're super pricey. It's, they're, they're, they, they have a high, they have a high humidity requirement. Like, it's, it, there's just a lot to them that even I don't fully understand or know myself that I, I there's no way I could, I could even bid on one to ever, uh, to think I can keep them here. Why is that? Just because how big the how big? I just don't know enough about them, man. Like, uh, I, yeah, I, we uh, just have to research. It, 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 I guess it's kind of kind of falls in the same things like Taipans and Mambas. Like, like if I had more experience with it and understand it more and knew someone personally that actually could show me the ropes a little bit, I'd feel a little more comfortable getting the animal for sure. Like, I would feel much more comfortable getting with a Bullens than I would uh, than I would a Mengshan. Now, yeah, I, I'm, we're getting carried away here because Sundays are all about lizards and monitors, and we're just fucking going oh. off about venomous snakes. So, but, but which is fine because no, which is fine because you know, as, as gangster as this is, hearing how good you guys are passionate and experienced with venomous, you guys are on the same level with monitors for sure. Like, I mean, Bruce definitely changed just by seeing Bruce work for like 20 minutes with Beetlejuice. I think like the not the last time, but the time before, just like. I saw the confidence you had and I was like, all right, I need to go with this kind of confidence and just go from there. And dude, it changed everything. That right there mm -hmm. was like, and, and I'm curious uh, with your guys' monitor experience. I mean, Jessica, I know you have a lot of the geckos down, but what's your guys' passion or what's your guys' plans with ever having your own monitors or, or do you have any kind of ambitions to make that happen? Just because how good Bruce is with it. Like, Man, I can only imagine if Bruce had a whole breeding facility and that was his job. Like, hey, just breed these monitors. I would love yeah. to see that. I, 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 I know we've talked about like mm -hmm. several different scenarios when it comes to that. But when it really comes down to it, I, I, I would love, absolutely love to breed tree monitors. Greens, Macrera, I, Prisina, I don't care. I got Black Dragon. I, I don't, all of them. If I could get, if I could get a hold of like, Maybe a two point three group of each, I, I would be set. I'd be so happy. Like I, I, if I could. In the future, we'll make it happen. And, and, well, we'll yeah, make it happen. it's definitely <laughs> something that I that I we still have, have a space, huge goal though. for. But yeah, once I have the space for it, that's what I I'm mean. Gonna come on at. You could you could have a legit room full filled of like you know legit trios and groups of tree monitors. Mm -hmm. I mean, they only require like they do require much more tall than anything, right? But yeah, like yeah. you know, big monitors are like that's fucking a room. That's a whole room. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And and, large and and that's why I, I mean, I, I man, I, I appreciate the monitors so much. But I just I wouldn't I wouldn't get more than just what I mean. I'm getting one more lace, and that's it. I'm gonna have a trio of laces, and oh. that's it. Uh, if, you you gonna, if you produce any, I'll buy one for you. Bruce, get? that's the thing, Bruce. Here's here. This is how good of a place you're in, okay? Because. All this monitor shit, like hey, this is why you need ball pythons. Because of the ball pythons, I'm not stressed out to sell any of these fucking laces. If that, if I've ever, if I've ever gifted enough to hatch my own laces, if I ever, if I ever get good, if I ever become a Bill Stegel in the Conjuro game, which is 
really, really difficult to be. Bill's like his yeah, own level. But I'm saying, if I ever get to that point, bro, I'm going to be like Patrick Holmes of this motherfucker. I don't want your money. I want that snake, and we're going <laughs> to trade. Like, we're going to – you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to have so much sick shit. Dude, absolutely. Gonna- I mean, that was the only reason we even considered ever breeding boas, actually. It was just like, man, do you really – Got to, bro. Cool? Like, you got to help yourself. Great. Because a lot of the stuff you love ain't going to make you money, bro. It ain't. <laughs> I'm, I'm Unfortunately, just... no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. It costs a lot of money to have everything we have. <laughs> well, and that's the thing even with like Condor. Like people are getting into this and they're like, well, they're like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dump like 50Ks into Condors. I'm like, for and, and do you expect a return at all? Because I hope yeah. not. Like you don't you, – you, I mean like I really hope not. Like when I hear anyone saying invest in a Condors, I like – I go like, what? Like what do you mean? Yeah. Like, are you – have you been a pet keeper of condos for 20 years? And that's why you're, I mean, I understand that part, but when you're yeah. just like wanting to dump into something that not too many people can grasp, that's why I'm like, dude, but if you can't breed ball pythons, don't touch anything else. Like just fucking go, go, you know, go get some beta fish. Like, I don't fucking know. I don't know what to say to you, but it's just like, hey, you know, this will make you a lot of money if you want to like ruin your home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the, but here's the thing. I don't even know why I say beta fish because even fish gaming ain't, ain't easy. Fish game is fucking probably like, I mean, I don't know. I've never dealt with fish, but I can only imagine changing all that water and shit like that. Things have to go That's bad right, at some yeah. point. We'll I love reptiles. Again. Yeah. I'm good Got with it. the reptiles. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I will tell you though, if, if I ever were that fucking balling, you know, and I had a big ass fucking, okay, well, hold on. I am going to, I am going to be that balling because you want, you want to know what my dream is, dude? You don't want to know my dream is the fucking fly river turtles. I want fly yeah. river turtles just everywhere. Like, dude, They're I so love. So cute, aren't they? <laughs> Ike and Mike, man. Mike and Ike. Ike and Mike. How do you say Mike and Ike? Mike, Mike and Ike. 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 <laughs> like, like, like the candy. Like the <laughs> like just, just not many things like a puppy, right? Like, a, especially a pit bull puppy that just makes my heart like I've just become the most vulnerable fucking pussy in the world. And that fly river turtle, the face, like, like, oh my God, how much closer can you get to a, a cartoon or Disney character like than that? Like, I love it, bro. And, and what's cute yeah. is like they, they start small and they get like this big, like fucking gigantic. They need like 500 gallons, right? Like they need to like, see him eat or anything. Yeah, just, like, feed them and stuff, and they'll come up and eat out of his hand. <laughs> That's what I was just about to say. Like, like, like all the time with like, like, like you were just saying, like I'll, I'll get all mushy with it. Like same same here. Like I'll, like if I start feeding them and they eat out of my hands, I'm sitting there going, Jessica, Jessica, come here, look! Oh my god, this is so cute. <laughs> like, uh, now, now, wait, I don't know if it's both of them, but one of them has like a little attitude, right? And like, will fucking whoosh, like do like a little yeah, bit of yeah, like, he'll clap at you. He'll do the little clap. Dude. You. <laughs> okay, I will say the reason why. I mean, reptiles and fish go hand in hand because I did go to SeaWorld a lot as a kid and. Right. You know, eventually, as I got older, I was like, this is fucked up. Why am I coming here? Like, this is not right. But, like, just seeing the under, like, underwater life. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, like, a whole oh, other, like, we don't understand. We don't understand it. Like, I don't give a fuck who you are. Nobody understands that that under under the water life type shit. And I, and, and as much as we love rep- aquarium, I don't want to take care of an aquarium. <laughs> right. I mean, because it's, like, I just, like, I, I for one thing, I'm ter- I don't want to say I'm terrified of the ocean, but I'm not. I, I freak out even though I've surfed and done all that. I, I freak out when I'm in the beach because I just don't know what's under my feet. I know I've been I've been taken away by a current before more than <laughs> once. Bro, it is the most I just the ocean will fucking ruin you. And I don't want to go out like that. I just don't want to like I mean I don't want to go out a lot of ways, but not the ocean. Like I do not want to go out the ocean. Like I don't want to not like Titanic. I, when I was 16, I got my scuba diving license. Like I was, I got my first certification, oh, and I'm able to go go underseas and stuff like that. And it was like it was a big family thing. My mom, well, not my mom, my my dad, his his girlfriend, uh, his, uh, my sister, and stuff like that. We all we all went together. And uh, the the like, I I still remember this day because I have all the gear even today. Have all that stuff. Uh, but like, like just going into the water initially and getting that first feeling of like, I'm just floating above this like epiphany of existence that's a below me, you know, like just huge amount of like, oh my God, I can't even see the bottom of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes your heart go like, into your, in your mouth. Like it's insane. 
But I mean, even as a kid, like, you know, you remember as you know, swimming in the pool, you're like, all right, who could hold their breath the longest? I was the, I sucked at that. Like, I would just be like, oh fuck, I'm gonna die, you know. And everyone would be under like for another minute, and I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, no, I no. just, <laughs> I just panic underwater. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, but I, that's been a problem my whole life. I've just been a whole like a huge overthinker. Like, I was really good at sports, but then I would have my days where I was just overthinking. And I was really bad. You know what I'm saying? So, like, being underwater, I just. And like it's like that. Were you there when I tried going in fucking bar checks ice tub? Were you there for that? Yes. We were on the outside of that, but yes. <laughs> I did it. I lasted like what about like thirty seconds or forty? Yeah, I was like this. Actually, I honestly, it was only like three minutes. But but who was but, in there for like ten minutes? It was someone went in and was no in there. bar. Oh no, Cusco <laughs> went in there for four twenty. Cusco was in there for a minute. Four twenty. <laughs> he's like he's like I'm gonna go for four four minutes and twenty seconds. I couldn't believe he did it. Fucking Cusco, he's a none of us good. <laughs> no way, <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, but you know, like, listen, that's why I respect people with that kind of mind control, like that kind of like mental, like yo, just breathe and relax, dude. I've I've never learned how to breathe and relax when it's like parent, like parent, like being around snakes is when I'm like yo, just just there's no reason to be fucking all crazy unless you unless you're on your story and then I turn on right, but like. And around my animals, I just, dude, it's just like, I love it. It brings me so much peace. And I've had peace majority of my life. So it just, I don't know, man. I just, I love being around something that just brings me to a calm state, you know? And uh, I'm there's sure you guys feel the same way. Animals, I feel like there, there's something calming about them. Just uh, after working at the Reptarium, like we would have like so many kids and their parents like af come in after the Reptarium and be like, oh, like you wouldn't believe how much this has helped my kid. Like, uh, especially kids on the spectrum. Um, I think that, a yeah, I, I saw, I, there was, I mean, I, every time I've gone over to cut up, uh, not, I'm sorry. Every time I've gone over to a uh, bar checks place, there's some kid that I'm seeing whose life is being changed. And, you know, one thing I've, that stood out with bar check when I first met him is I remember I was like, I was kind of worried. Cause I was like, dude, this guy looks so busy and I don't want to bug him. Like I, I hate when it's somebody I look up to that much too. I'm just like, dude, I don't want to bother you, dude. Like, um, but he was like, Hey, you know, he was so like warming and welcome to me. But then he was like that to the next person and the next person and the next person. And I was like, dude, this guy is everywhere with the same energy showing the same love. And then I see the attention he gives to children and stuff like that dude that you don't think that fucking did something to me man like i'm telling you right now like and you understand this is after i had so many people in my ear telling me warning me about bar check right i had some people yeah. saying like hey, you know this and and i remember like yo show me like this is photoshop i'm like show me an actual like proof i never saw any proof and then they, they would tell me well wait till you go there wait till you go there i'm like all right let's fucking see Nothing. okay yeah absolutely i'd invite anybody to come on down come on please Please I'd love come. for you to point one single thing yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah, please come. So, and here's the thing. It, it's all good because at the end of the day, you guys know if I go to Tinley, I always go to the Reptarium. That is like going to be a, a ritual. And I have big people like the homies, Bill Stiegel. I have Bill Stiegel who's going to be going to the Reptarium with me at some point, maybe yeah, October. I cannot wait to see him. And Bill, yeah. check this out. Bill's coming to Trap Fest 2022. Can you believe that shit? Oh, oh shit. All right. So so what's going to happen first? Him coming to Reptarium or us seeing him at Trap Fest? Uh, I think Trap Fest for sure because I think Tinley, right. October. I'm trying to get Bill because here's the thing. Like you guys know how epic Tinley is. And, and I spent both Tinleys of mine with you guys. So you guys know the experience we've had. But like running into people – like fuck, Greg Maxwell last show, I got to take a picture with Greg Maxwell, and then Marshall still, Mendez. Still mad jealous of that dude. Still Bro, mad what, jealous. Love we're gonna see him again. But here's the thing: October, it's going down again, and we're gonna have people like Bill Stiegel there on top of all the other legends. I'm, uh, dude, I love Tinley, bro. Like that's oh, the I Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, that's so amazing. Be God forbid nothing fucking funky happens from here on out. I'm just saying, if 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 we could ride this out to October. That's going to be the biggest show, I feel like. Because if March was this big, if March was this much bigger than October was, I feel like, wait till this October. Yeah. I'm going to so feel I, good, man. It's going to be big. All right. So hold on. I got to ask you guys um, long-term goals, okay? I, I'm curious. You know, I, obviously, you guys love working at the Reptarium. But what are some things you guys really want to accomplish in the next, like, five 
to eight years. Like, I mean, what, what, I mean, especially because you guys have so much knowledge, Jessica, eight plus years at Reptarium. And then you have, you know, Bruce, who's just a natural fucking born badass with these snakes and monitors. But like, have you guys even thought about down the road outside of Reptarium, what you guys possibly want to do with this? I know we thought about it a lot. Yeah. I would say for my vision for the next five years is we're hopefully going to start, you know, like move into our house and hopefully start a family. So that's yeah. where I want. <laughs> Damn. Maybe, we could it, maybe it happens at the same time for us. Yeah. You know, you want to know what makes me, it doesn't make me sad, but like, dude, all my homies are having kids. Like I'm talking about like homies, uh, out, <laughs> all, all my home, all my homies outside of the reptile game. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and like, I, I feel like, I don't know. Like, they're, I mean, we're still cool, but I lose touch with them. Like, I mean, because I understand, like, you know, my my dogs are my kids and we got different priorities. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't absolutely. Know. but at the end of the day, like, I, I'm just like, you know, I just hope I could have a homie or somebody else that I'm like, yo, like, how's your kid doing? Like, my kid yeah. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> my kid keeps getting into the fucking goddamn bell laced fucking enclosure. What do I do? Why, why is the kid getting in the trash all the time? <laughs> <laughs> He keeps pulling Not, sheds out. I don't understand. It's gonna be a handful being his kid, I'm sure. <laughs> but how much? How much of that would change, Jessica? Let's say you tomorrow you wake up and you're pregnant, and you know you're having a kid. Like, would, would there be any changes, or what would happen? Because I listen. You want to hear truth right now? I don't like backing out of anything. If I buy something, I fucking buy it. It is what it is. I, know, I hate. I, so I don't make him get rid of anything if that's what I, you're at. I hate window shoppers and, and and I unfortunately had to window shop or actually not even I bought and I asked for the refund. I hate that's even worse. Sorry, Megan Kelly, but dude, I ha I bought the green anaconda from her, you know, yeah. and, 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 and me and my wife were working on things and she's like, Hey, um, didn't you just get rid of fucking 12, 13 mainlands? Like, you know, like because of like the responsibility of the massive snakes and it just like, I didn't think, fully through it and yeah this anaconda is a baby but i my mindset's always six seven years down the road and mm -hmm. the way i fucking feed my motherfucking animals this bitch is gonna get big really fucking and i just don't want to deal with the big snake so anyways i oh my I god anaconda's like, too they pee all the time they're such sucks. i had to fucking back oh out bro I had to, yeah but guess guess what i got since i backed out what another malukin <laughs> Oh, okay, uh, nice. <laughs> I think that's better. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I, 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 I would love to get a few scrubs. <laughs> you already, dude, we're good friends with the scrub king. Like, dude. Yeah, I know, right? Like, dude, I can get any point time already. Speak up. Here's the thing, you guys. It's once you guys have a kid, then you're getting her birthday gifts or ball pythons from Uncle MJ. And then what's going to happen <laughs> is you're going to raise them up. And by the time she's in high school, she's going to have her college money all set. And you're going to thank me later. Who okay? knows as a girl? I keep telling her. I keep telling her first. Oh, I keep, did I say she? Am I assuming it's a she already? Yeah, dude. No, I, I thought the same thing though. I, I think I honestly think our first one's gonna be a girl. Hundred percent. Yeah. So no I already know. I know just the way I was to my sister and how I am already that I'm gonna. Babe, be a girl. Oh my god! Yes, I know it's just gonna god. be like just just the Lord above just getting back at me. You know, like yeah, I know. Like, God's like MJ <laughs> definitely not getting a guy. Fuck that! Like he's <laughs> woo, a lot of work. We're not gonna um, make okay. this easy on him. <laughs> <laughs> but okay just just to kind of wrap up that that last question yeah, yeah. You, you there's nothing you would want to have him part with you, you feel like i mean what about like you know the breeding um, i might make him like well we have everything locked up and everything so honestly like yeah for i wouldn't make him get rid of anything uh it might have to be revisited down the road when the kid starts getting older i think but um it right. just depends on the kid in general. I think it's just, I think it's not really even on the kid. I think it's more on me. Like if, yeah. if, if I feel like I can keep the place secure enough to where I'm, I'm comfortable with having a toddler walking around, able to open up and do whatever the heck they think they can. Or should I, you know, like get like a presence? Like that's the reason why even, I mean, it's just us here and we still have our room here. This reptile room is locked in. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a key code to this. There's a camera in the corner. There's, you know, the, everything is on a timer around here. So, like, ad admittedly, we we were already pretty paranoid about the safety in this in this place. So, uh, I, I I would like to think that I'd be okay with my kid, one two kids being able to actually live in the same house as my animals. And then also, do you feel like 
if there was something that kept Jessica from helping you that you have the collection under control, just solo dolo. I mean, I mean, even if like, you know, I mean, do you have a homie who could come over and help you? Like, do you ever thought, have you thought of that yet? Or actually you already met him. Uh, you remember Mike? Oh, the homie Mike. That guy's sick Yeah, as my fuck. boy Mike. Yeah, like dude. Mike. Mike. So, so Mike, Mike, I've been teaching a little bit and so has Brian. A little bit, a little bit. Every time I bring a venomous snake in, we kind of give him a little pointer here and there and teach him a little bit. So I know if I really, really, really needed needed a homie, Mike would be there for me. If I needed someone to come and help me clean snakes, or if I needed an extra back, he would always be there for me. He lives closer than most folks, anyways. So, uh, so yeah, I, I definitely think Mike would be my 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 go to guy if I were to ask at least at least to see if he could. If he couldn't, I know. I know at the very least I might be able to get a couple other friends local. Like her dad, for for sure, probably wouldn't mind it too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, I have a wrap up question before we get into the hot seat questions. Um, and uh, I'm I'm just only curious on this because how far back both of you guys go with not only working with animals but working for someone who's basically like I don't know. You could compare. Bartek to so many people like Michael Jordan, fucking goddamn Tiger Woods. I don't know. Like this is just my opinion, right? Elon Musk. Elon. No, I, I. Yeah, you know he he does kind of. No, you know who? Okay, the thing is, it's like kind he of originating kind of like vibe. Yeah. No, but, okay. Elon Musk is very awkwardly like well, like he, he his personality seems weird, but you, you like it, right? And I feel like Brian Barcheck is like very enjoyable to be around like he makes me like you know what i mean but like you know who elon musk is of the reptile game is justin Cabelka, bro i'll oh, tell yeah. you that right now that's actually that's actually better than i thought they, actually the way they they, they calculate whatever you ask them they kind of like sit there and they like and then yeah okay sure and they <laughs> the way they talk like i don't know i i respect the shit out of justin a lot and i just respect the shit out of uh Bar hey, absolutely. but uh anyways going back to what i was saying um I'm sure you guys, even yourself, had a lot of trial and errors, you know, and, and some things could be avoided, some things can't. But what are things you feel like could be avoided when you're first coming into the hobby? Or what are some things you feel like is a suggestion that to, to anyone out there who should be kind of, you know, I don't know, right foot, uh, the right step forward when first collecting anything, if, either if it's a gecko, lizard, fucking uh, snake, whatever. But like, you know, how, what's your advice for anyone out there to not get misled or, you know, basically start on the wrong foot? You can go I'm, first, Jessica. I'm actually going to go. I'm actually going to go first on this one. Oh, go yeah, ahead. Uh, Even better. A hundred, hundred percent. I think uh, um, don't go overcomplicated on what you're doing. Don't overthink it. That's my first. That's my absolute first suggestion for anybody. For that's the first thing everybody does. Everybody overthinks. Like that's like. Yeah. You're, oh, you're gonna over your biggest problem. Overfeed, overheat, over everything. Overthinking everything. I would say don't like get too like uh beat down or take too seriously. Like you'll see a lot of stuff out yeah. there that, that is very negative about like for first time keepers or people getting into the reptile game. Like uh I I would say do a lot of research with whatever you're getting into and you know, pick something that you're really interested in. Don't go for just like someone says, oh, ball pythons are the best for beginners. Well, if you're not interested in ball pythons or you're not interested in corn snakes or any of the things that uh, people are, are telling you are the best thing for beginners, well, do your research on what you are interested in. Are you going to be able to provide all of the necessary things for the environment and the care? Um, I would say go ahead and you know, jump right into that rainbow boa or that, you know, red tail boa or whatever you're interested in. Chondro, whatever, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just make sure you're doing your research. Maybe yeah. even set up the cage first and see if you can get all the stuff right. If you're really that interested in that type of animal, though, you've probably already started your research. Yeah, your, your exactly. Research. You a lot know, just, just start do a their lot interest of it. at, you know, ball pythons. Like, always, like always goes. come but from free source, you, resources, resources and stuff like that. In, yeah. I, can I capitalize on that? Yeah. Go ahead. Don't fucking waste people's time with such a basic researchable question too. Like I, I, I feel like there's so many things that you could literally go fucking find out what's the right solution for you. But even if you have a question such as, like, I will bring up ball pythons because this is one thing where I'm like, yo, and, and, and I hate saying that I'm not a ball python guy because I am. But yeah. really, like if you were like, if we're like, it does not interest me. I'm so sorry, but like I am very 
I'm into what I'm into, but when you come to me and say, hey, I got this pastel butter, MJ, what should I put it to? I go, I, I, fuck, I don't fucking know. What do you want from me? I'm I'm not not you fucking, go, go, go to fucking Morph Market and just randomly, I don't know, and that irritates me because like, I love what I love because I spent hours researching and i fucking i followed i followed breeders for fucking almost a year like this is what i want okay and you i didn't ask you he might have bro. like done all kinds of things you know Here's my i i could have i could have easily gone into other projects that would have made me like more advanced where i'm at right now but i was so more in love with these codoms versus recessive so i kept a lot of the codoms and maybe one other recessive in it but like i didn't know like you know even if i didn't know i still kept what i kept i like the dark yeah. shit you put hypo in a dark stuff it doesn't always stay dark so like you know I, either way i stayed loyal to the dark shit so i just wish people like you because you guys are nice people i know if somebody comes and asks you a question you guys will give them time of day but i feel like people could do a lot of the legwork themselves and save a real good solid question for something they're really going to need help with versus just fucking wasting goddamn time like I, I mean i don't know you Amen. should hear you should, if you ever go into our office on like a, a work day you'll hear beth answering like the most basic of care questions yeah. that you could it's like i don't understand why someone thought to take the time to call and not just google <laughs> like, <laughs> like what temperature does my ball python need to be at like that's something you could easily google yeah, Beth didn't actually even like fully. She, she didn't really understand reptile keeping or husbandry or anything like that until she started working there, and then she started learning every little bit and stuff like that. And now she's a pro. Like yeah. she doesn't even keep After any reptiles I'm herself, but she's questions. a freaking pro. Like she knows every little detail. Like to the freaking like, if you googled every little bit that she said, she was practically your Google search. She knew it all. Like, like you know what I mean? If you had two teachers to pick from, teacher Google or teacher experience, what teacher are you gonna go with? I'm gonna go with experience, experience for sure. Yeah, experience, absolutely. <laughs> Into the hot seat questions we go. Are you guys ready for these hot seat questions? And I need you guys to answer. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, Bruce went ahead and fucking crashed this. So guess what? You're gonna crash his episode and now, okay, when it's one on one. Absolutely. But I need you guys to answer these hot seat questions at the same time. Don't look at one. Don't look at, hey, babe, what do you think? No, fuck that. Say it how you mean it and how you feel it. Are you ready? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Hear it. All right. Hot seat questions for the beautiful Mr. and Mrs. Sondars. You ready? Oh, I'm beautiful too. Oh. I Shut up. All right. <laughs> Frozen thought or live? Frozen thought. Frozen thought, yeah. Why? Don't wait for her. Uh, I, I, was, or, I said this last time. <laughs> a, a cutter or no cutter? A cutter. Yeah. Yeah, see, look, she did it too. Come on, Jess. All right, red chondro neo or yellow chondro neo? Red. red. Absolutely red. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post, post. first shed. All right. Yay imports or boo imports? Boo. Yay, yay imports. <laughs> Wow. Okay. If you had to import, if you could import one reptile today, what reptile would that be? Oh shit! Komodo. <sighs> Woo! I like that. I, I like that. Up. You're going to jail, but I like that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I said tuatara. Yeah, oh, you did not say that. You said tartar. I thought that isn't that a sushi roll. Yeah, I thought you said tartar too. I was yeah, like, wrong. Right. Right. Okay. Terrible. <laughs> one rep, one reptile we should never import ever again. So kind of true. We don't import green iguanas, do we? We should never import those. Yeah, that's though. just a waste of time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a list. <laughs> Rosie boa or sand boa? Rosie boa. Mm, Rosie. Fuck neither. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, that's absolutely. Like, absolutely. Like, that's a hard question. Yeah, that's really a really hard question. Sports or sports or no sports. Sports. No sports. <laughs> favorite favorite sport, Bruce. Baseball all the way. Is it? Uh, is that football? Sport 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 you hate the most, Jess. College football. Yeah, <laughs> college football. College football. She hates college football. Women's <laughs> basketball. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> steak or fish? Steak. Steak. Favorite cut of steak. Oh, dude, tomahawk. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sirloin or um, filet. So basically, yeah. it's just basic. 
Get <laughs> I'm taking, dude. I'm taking you to a really nice fucking restaurant when you come out here, and, and yeah, I'm changing absolutely. everything for Jess. That poor girl. Uh, I, want to, I want her to eat a tomahawk. That's so yeah, good. you guys, we're gonna go tomahawk for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. Where we at? <laughs> uh, oh, yay alcohol or boo alcohol? Yay. yay alcohol. Favorite alcohol beverage? Beer. Rum. Sublime or Nirvana? Nirvana. Nirvana. Marilyn Manson or Nine Inch Nails? Marilyn Manson. Nine Inch Nails. Favorite monitor species? Salvadori. Like lace monitors. <laughs> Various. <laughs> Favorite snake species? I like boa constrictors. Well, oh. Ophelia Fagus, Hannah. Nah. I like Squamagira. Change my answer. If, if you could have. If you got one breeding project and one breeding project only, what would it be? Eastern moss saga rattlesnake. I'd love to. I'd love to take the endangered out of eastern moss saga rattlesnakes. Respect. Uh, I'm doing the breeding I want to do right now, which is lychees. So, mm -hmm. lychees. Little word association. First thing to come to mind: milk, chocolate. <laughs> Jess, you're cheating. <laughs> so you can't cheat. Are you thinking about Nothing it? Stop comes thinking to about mind it. When you say milk, it's just I bet gross, it was milk. Gross. <laughs> okay, gross. cool. That's all you have to say. Substrate. Prime. Yeah, reptile prime. Mites. Yeah. Mites spray. <laughs> 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 oh God. O ovulation. <laughs> Ovoviparous. That's your first thought. Absolutely. <laughs> it was the first thing that came to mind, and I said it. God damn it! I was, I was going to say it. I was supposed to just say yay. Yay, <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Did you say yay? Is that your answer, Jess? Yay, yay eggs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first time venomous keeper. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's mine. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> first time. All right. If you, could le if you had to legalize it or illegalize it, free handling. I'd make it legal. Yeah. Your body, your choice, right? It. So Jessica says <laughs> Jessica says illegal. You say legal. I say legal. Yeah. You say illegal. He said legal. Legal. You say illegal. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, good job. You guys are done. Awesome. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna fight about that later. No, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks there for the go. controversy in the home. <laughs> Listen, if it's, one, if it's one thing that inspires me, it's a couple that have each other's back. If it's a couple that rides through every storm, through every fucking rainbow, everything th with each other, and that's you two. I will say right now, it is a pleasure every time I get to hang out with you two at either a show or at the Reptarium. But having you guys on this show was amazing. Well overdue. You guys had, we had over 100 people at one point in the live. Um, let's see how many, how many likes, where were the likes at? Oh, 102 likes. You know, we're at 100% fucking view to like ratio. What do you have to say to all your supporters out there, guys? And and let's let's let Jess go first on this one, please, Bruce. What do you have to say to all your supporters? Because, I, listen, I had a lot of random people telling me how excited they were to hear you talk because they follow you on the Reptarium and all that shit. So what do you have to say to all your supporters out there? Well, thanks for everyone that watched. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we're live right now. You guys are like... Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys for all uh, that that watched. Um, thank thanks for everyone that follows me on Instagram too. Um, I need to post more on there. <laughs> I think it's been like two months since I posted. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, and you got well over twenty k followers. Respect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Bruce, so, yeah, still follow me. Thank you. <laughs> So I, uh, I mean, I, I can't, I can't appreciate you guys enough, man. Everybody that that reaches out, that says, "Hey," that sends us super chats, every little bit of you guys that even just, even call me an asshole, I don't, I don't even care. Like, uh, I, you know, you guys are all awesome, every one of you. you. You guys are spending time, even if you don't like me, are still spending time listening to me, and I appreciate that. That's pretty freaking cool. Uh, nonetheless, man, like, we we had a great, we always have a good time with you, MJ, and <laughs> I mean, like. Any time spent in my reptile room is always a time with a smile on my face. I mean, that's always what it is, man. Well, fuck yeah. Well, listen, this will... Uh, 
this is one of many more rounds. I could tell you that right now. Um, and like, you know, Bruce still needs his one on one, which Jessica mm -hmm. will crash as well, because that's just how we do things. But oh, uh, guys, thank you so much for your passion. Thank you for your hard work. And thank you for being so fucking awesome to everyone out there who follows you. Thank you for being my homie. And uh, we will talk soon. But uh, yeah, guys, Jessica and Bruce Saunders, it's a wrap. My love. Thank you guys. Have a, have a great rest of your night. Hey, go, now you go yell. Go do your thing. Go fucking be wild. Just don't get bit. Love you. I'm out. Yeah! <laughs> wow. Fucking Jesus. That poor girl. Just kidding. What a guy. Thank you to everyone who uh, tapped in on this. I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to hit that like button for them. The likes. I mean, listen, I'm not complaining about the likes. The likes are there. I appreciate all that so much. Uh, before you guys head out, I do want to talk about what the lineup looks like for this week because I am very excited to uh, show you guys who we're bringing on the show. Um, we, we have some hitters, you know what I'm saying? And, and this guy who we're bringing on tomorrow on the new breeder on the block series came referred from one of my homies that we were talking about just earlier. The homie Justin Kabelka was like, hey, MJ, what do you think of this guy? And I was like, oh, I know this guy. Uh, fucking let's let's do it. So we're going to have my homie. God, don't always do that. We're going to have my homie here, the Black Sun Reptiles in the building tomorrow here on New Breeder on the Block Series, Trap Talk with MJ Podcast. It's going to go down. So make sure you go down on the link, set your reminder, pull up for the homie, BSR, because it's going to go down. This guy's a day one supporter for sure, and I know he's been working with some heat. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it's been like for him being in the hobby for uh, as long as he has, okay? And then, guys, I don't know if you guys are ready for this. I, I, I don't know how many chondro heads I have in the building right now. Um, you know, so I have about 70 ish people here and I appreciate you guys, but I probably have the most historical podcast personally going down this Thursday night. I'm not prepared. I'm trying to prepare. Uh, I'm probably going to go through this guy's book again, but I hope you guys out there that are listening who are into chondros just maybe know what a chondro is because of this episode, anything with chondros, if it's in your mind, I need you to fucking be ready for this episode because this man right here is a living legend. Oh, not me. This guy right here. Greg Maxwell of Greg Maxwell Reptiles happening this Thursday night. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to want to miss this. This guy is one of the authors of the book, The More Complete Chondro. I mean, this is every OG Chondro breeder's fucking OG. Like this is this is your favorite breeder's favorite breeder in the Chondro game. 110%. And he's back in the game. How is he back in the game? Find out this thursday night click on that fucking link set your reminder and tap in because this is the coolest reptile podcast in the world and i gotta say i do have more shirts available if you guys want to get yourself one of these limited edition trap talk with mj pocket t-shirts only available to my patreon members only available to my guests i have one wave coming out so if you do want to get your uh hands on one of these uh never be released again fucking shirts hit me up and i got you I'll tell you how you can get one. No, they're not free. Don't even fuck with me. This is not a soup kitchen. But thank you for your support. I appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Oh, and I will see my Patreon members in a little bit. Trap Talk Zoom session going down right now. Fuck, I got to go. Patreon members, you know where the link's at. I'll see you guys in a bit. It's your boy MJ, and I'm tapping out. Have a good rest of your night, guys. Cheers.